The man hit the poor girl with all his anger. He couldn't understand how she could do something like that. He did not expect such an outburst from her, and this made him very angry. After all, she ruined all his plans. The man was furious and asked the girl how she could smile after this. It seemed to him that she was truly crazy, because, in his opinion, only a crazy person could do such a thing and then smile like that. The girl, with a smirk on her face and all contempt, smiled and thanked him for such a compliment. Her behavior angered him even more. He gritted his teeth and said that she was arrogant. He was furious. The man screamed furiously at the poor girl because he wanted to know whose blood flowed in her. He didn't understand how she could interview their family and get pregnant from someone unknown. The man believed that the young lady had gone crazy. The girl was only encouraged by this man's behavior. She asked if he really wanted to hear who the baby's father was. The man was taken aback. The girl said that she met a young man in a shabby tavern. He was drunk, but truly beautiful. His muscles and hoarse voice caught her attention. He was truly an avid night reveler. The man was amazed by her words. He became even more furious. He did not want to listen to her and closed her mouth. The man said that from today, she will be under house arrest, and he won't be able to leave the room. He shouted for the servants to lock her in the basement. The girl was a little surprised, since it was not difficult for her to piss him off. She said that because of her, he lost a good opportunity to sell his own daughter and get drunk on her grief. He was angry and shouted to the servants to quickly take her away. The girl shouted in rage that no one would touch her with a finger, because she couldn't allow them to harm her and her child. She stood up proudly and went on her own to the place of her long imprisonment. Much to her regret, she had no choice but to obey her father. The girl slowly walked into the room. It was hard for her, but she couldn't help it. She had no choice. She knew that one day her father would pay for such treatment. The girl knew that she had to take revenge on him herself. She lay down on the bed and slowly fell asleep. She knew that she had no right to give up, since she was carrying a child within herself. She knew what she had to do to ensure that they lived well and long. Six months ago, the girl decided to run away from home and bring her plans to life. She simply had no other choice. The maids ran and looked for her in fear. They knew that if their master discovered his daughter was missing, they would not be able to say hello. The girl fled because her father had recently informed her that Count Bupo had requested her as his concubine. He already had three concubines, and everyone knew that they had decided to simply sell the girl into a harem. She was shocked by her father's words. He wanted to sell it as an unnecessary item. But the girl knew that she could not allow this to happen. She passionately did not want to marry such a pathetic man. Therefore, I came up with a plan and intended to bring it to life. She didn't know where to go, but she knew what she needed to do. She couldn't let her father decide for her and sell it as an unnecessary thing. The girl approached the house and saw men chatting incessantly. She wanted to approach them to solve all her problems and get it over with as quickly as possible. Suddenly, she heard an incomprehensible noise. She turned around and saw a man. He didn't look bad. She decided to help him and later asked him for a favor. She approached him and asked if he needed help. He looked at her in bewilderment and asked who she was and what she needed from him. The girl was a little taken aback. She sincerely wanted to help him. She asked if he needed help. He was angry and said he didn't need help. He looked at her and told the girl to leave quickly. The young lady looked and said she needed help. She said that she could help him, and in return he would help her. So to speak, quid pro quo. The man did not understand what she needed. The man found this behavior from the girl very suspicious and incomprehensible. It was very strange that such a person was walking around alone in such a place. But, unfortunately, he had no choice, and he needed help. The man said he needed a place to stay for the night. The girl found a room where he could spend the night, and she also said that she put all his things on the table. He thanked her for her help. The girl knew that she could not miss such a chance. She was determined to carry out her insidious plan. She looked at him and said that since she was helping him, now it was his turn. The young lady said that she needed him to spend the night with her. The man was dumbfounded. He didn't understand her. He looked at her and asked with confusion why she needed this kind of service. The girl said that she wanted to take revenge on someone. He looked at her and thought that maybe a political conflict was brewing, and he was not a fan of such situations. 
the man said that there are other much better ways to take revenge. The girl assured him that she did not have time for another plan and for all the stories. He was puzzled by her persistence and desperation. She knew that she had to find a man and get pregnant from him. Otherwise, nothing would work out for her, and she would be sold. She didn't want such a fate for herself, since this promised only troubles and misfortunes. Even the thought of it scared her. The man realized that the girl was desperate and had no other choice. He knew he had to help her since he had no choice. He calmly approached her and said that in this case he would help her, referring to the fact that he would rather spend the night with him than with another man. He assured her that a random passerby could be a dangerous one-night companion for her, and he won't harm her. The girl knew that everything was not important. After all, it was just one night, after which everything must change. He kissed her with all tenderness. They moved onto the bed. The girl enjoyed his company. From an early age, she was accustomed to the fact that strong male hands only caused her harm. But now she had a completely different experience. She felt good with him and enjoyed the warmth of his body. The young lady did not understand how a man could be so affectionate and gentle. She was amazed and felt bliss with him. It was truly an unforgettable experience and a wonderful night. She wanted to know his name. She didn't want to run away from him, but she had no choice. The man was sleeping peacefully after a stormy night. A servant entered the room and apologized to the master for losing sight of him. He was upset and assured the gentleman that this would never happen again. The man sincerely regretted that this happened. He wanted to correct the situation. The young man was surprised that his night stranger simply left and did not even say her name. He understood that he was simply doing his duty, but he was amazed at her departure. He remembered their closeness with warmth. Usually he feels discomfort with such legs and sleeps poorly. But that night he slept well in some strange hotel. This surprised him very much. He looked at his companion and asked him to immediately find the girl with whom he came to the hotel yesterday. He really wanted to see her. She was beautiful, and he couldn't get her out of his head. After such an unforgettable night, he passionately desired to meet the beautiful stranger again. The man wanted to see her at least once. He wanted to feel the warmth of her body more than once. Gupo arrived at the young lady's house. The father of a sweet girl almost danced the Mercedes Count. He was glad that he came to them, since he could quickly sell his daughter to the man. Mrs. Karen looked at the men with contempt and disgust. The Count saw her and could not look away. He said that the rumors do not lie and she is truly beautiful. He came close to her and said that she was the sweetest in the world. He really wanted to have her, and as soon as possible. The Count said that the wedding would take place faster than he thought, and in particular, he would try to do everything so that the wedding took place as soon as possible. He desperately wanted to take possession of her. The Viscount was in seventh heaven. The Viscount said that he would be very glad if the wedding took place tomorrow. Mrs. Karen decided to interrupt their truly sweet conversation and exchange of pleasantries, which infuriated her to the point of infuriation. She said that she has one small problem, which is in her stomach. Karina said that about six months ago, she had an affair with a man in a tavern. The Count was shocked. He shouted at the Viscount with rage because he hid from him that the girl was pregnant. The Viscount said that he did not know that his daughter was pregnant, and he said that the child was not a hindrance since he was not born yet. The Count, in a rage, grabbed the man and began dragging him to the door. The Viscount asked the Count to let him in, since he did not know that the girl was pregnant. But the Count wanted to deal with him immediately and resolve the issue immediately. He didn't understand how the man had the conscience to deceive him. After they left, Karen laughed furiously at the whole situation. She was delighted with the Count's reaction, and she was very pleased that her father would get what he deserved. The Viscount was furious that his daughter had deceived him. He hit her in the face. He looked at his daughter and said with rage that she had won the battle, but he would win the war. The Viscount came closer and said that he would make her life painful and unbearable, that she herself would beg for death. The man was angry and said that he would sell her and her child, and then he ordered her to be locked up, and in addition, he said that the servant should not give her a drop of water for a whole week. Three years later, Karen was living the life of a maid. She did everything her father told her to do. The maid came and said that Karen was calling Viscount. The Viscount looked at her with all contempt and was glad that she looked so pitiful. 
He thought it was better this way, since she used to be very arrogant. He asked with a grin if she wanted to answer something. But the young lady listened to him silently. The Viscount said that after four years, he had found a man who would buy it. Archduke Buster Cayenne was looking for a marriage partner. The Viscount said that there are rumors about the man that he is a murderer, but since this is for her, he is not particularly worried about her future life. Karen asked how much he paid for it. The man listed the entire list of what the Archduke provided him in payment for his daughter. He was glad, since it was a very good deal by his standards. The Viscount approached his daughter and said that if she ruined everything again, he would sell her by the barrel along with her son, adding that she needed to behave decently if she wanted to be saved, and leave this place. Karina did not respond to her father's words. When leaving, the Viscount said that they would set off in a week, so she needed to pack all her things in advance. Karen entered the room. Her son was very glad that she came. Karen was very happy to see him. He filled her life with meaning. Karina was surprised that her son was still not sleeping. Needy said that he was waiting for her, and that's why he didn't go to bed. She hugged him crazy and said that most likely they would soon leave this place. He was excited. Needy asked if he would go with her. Karina smiled tenderly and said that they would leave this house together. The boy was very happy and jumped into his mother's arms so much that he almost knocked her over. Is Needy all right with her mother, as she looked puzzled? Karina said that everything was fine, she was just very happy. The girl hoped that she could get them out of this place. They were getting ready to leave. Karina really wanted to leave the house as soon as possible. She knew that she could cope with everything and survive all the hardships if they left this unpleasant place. They arrived at the scene. The servants greeted the guests with all respect and said that the Archduke would only allow the lady and her son into the estate, and everyone else would wait in the carriage. The servants did not take this news very joyfully, but they obediently agreed. Karen asked how long it would take to get to the estate. The estate servants said that it was about a 40-minute walk from the main gate to the estate itself. Needy said that he really wants to go for a walk. They walked slowly. The boy ran and was happy, as he was able to see a lot of beauty that he had not seen before. Lady Karen was greeted by the butler. He greeted her sweetly and said that his master was awaiting their arrival in the living room. She appreciated all the splendor of the estate and noticed that the young gentleman was rich to his heart's content. But the young archduke decided to go down and meet them in person. Karen saw the archduke and realized that this was the same man who was with her that night. She was furiously surprised and did not understand how this could be. The girl was glad to see him, but at the same time, she was frightened by his appearance. He didn't recognize her. She flew up to him and realized that something was wrong with his eyes that night. But now he looks fine. And the man himself looked healthy. The man introduced himself and said that she should not expect love from him in their marriage. He said he didn't want a big ceremony, but instead they would just sign the marriage papers. Karen agreed with him. The Archduke said that they would sleep in separate buildings, and she will have a whole separate house. He said in a calm voice that he asked her to live a modest and quiet life away from society. Karen agreed with everything. He looked at her and realized that she was not afraid of him. But, unfortunately for him, he cannot read it. Since the young lady did not show her emotions, the man said that she would be provided with a separate group of servants and maids. He also asked her to inform the coachman and butler in advance if she wanted to go somewhere. The girl said that she was happy with everything, but she would prefer to live in the house only with her son. The Archduke was puzzled and greatly surprised. She said that she agreed to all his conditions and asked him only for one thing. He agreed. The girl was very grateful to him. Bowing, she thanked him again. Karen said that she would live according to his demands. Covering herself with a fan so that he could not see her face, she asked if she could go since he did not need her. He let her go. The man looked after her. He thought she was acting like a rock. He thought for a second about the girl he met three years ago. They were similar. The Archduke had not thought about the young stranger for a long time. At that time, he searched the whole country, but could not find her. He noticed that they had the same build. The man didn't remember the girl being so thin. Karen called her son and said that they had to go. The joyful boy ran up to his mother. The Archduke was surprised. The boy had red eyes. Just like the young master, he knew that this eye color was very rare, and such a coincidence was very strange. The butler showed her the house. 
and he asked with surprise whether she really didn't need servants. Karen thanked him for his concern and said that she could handle it herself. Oslo said that if she needed anything, she could contact him. He also said that knights would be on guard to protect her. Karen thanked him. The man left, leaving her alone with the child. Needy was running around the new house. The boy really liked the new house. He was glad that they would live in such a place. He was glad that they left their previous place of residence. He no longer wanted to return there. He ran around the house and climbed to the second floor in joy. Karen shouted after him to watch his step and be careful. She was happy and hoped that in such conditions she could raise him correctly. The man asked the Archduke if he really wanted to let the girl live alone with her child in the house, without servants. The Archduke said that she herself would come to ask for servants when she was tired of taking care of herself and her son. He didn't know what she wanted to prove with this, but he was confident that he could cope with everything. The Archduke was sure that if the girl asked too much, he would have an extra headache. The man looked at him and said that marriage is not a battlefield, but the Archduke was sure of the opposite. The man obediently agreed and left his company. The man wanted to live to see the day when the master's heart would melt and he would become kinder. Karen read a fairy tale to her son. She thought he had fallen asleep. She looked at him. Suddenly, he opened his eyes and began to smile. Karen asked why he wasn't sleeping. Needy said he couldn't sleep in such a beautiful house. Karen looked at him to see if he was interested in who his father was. Needy was surprised, as he did not know that he had a father. Karen asked him to keep a secret, and she will tell him everything. The boy was surprised and asked why he had to keep the secret. Karen said that when she met his father, he was bewitched by a toad monster. She said she read him a story about a prince, a princess, and a monster. The characters in the fairy tale are her and his father. He was glad that his mother was telling him. Karen said that his father is the man they met in the morning. Who has red eyes? Needy was upset and could not understand how his father could not recognize him. Karen said that his father had not yet gotten over the curse that the monster placed on him, and that's why he doesn't remember his family. And if he does remember them, the monster will find him and take him away. Karen said that for this reason, he must keep everything a secret. And when he grows up, he will become a knight. And then he will be able to fight the monster. And when they defeat him, his father will immediately remember them. Needy wanted to wake up his mother. The boy really wanted to go feed the fish that were in the yard. Karen didn't want to wake up. She wanted to rest a little more. He never woke her up and left without her. The little boy was very glad that he came to look at the fish. He wanted to feed them. He looked at them and was surprised at their beauty and the fact that there were so many of them. He wanted to feed them so much that he accidentally dropped the bucket and shovel. Unfortunately, she fell into the fountain with fish. He was very upset because his mother bought this shovel for him at the market and he did not know what to do because he was afraid to climb in and pull it out of the water himself. But suddenly, he remembered that he had a new friend who would definitely help him cope and get a shovel. He looked around, but he was nowhere to be found, and decided to go and look for him somewhere else. The Archduke arrived at his estate. He and his butler began to discuss military matters. He casually asked if anything important had happened while he was away all this time. When suddenly their conversation was interrupted by a little boy, the Archduke noticed him running and could not understand what had happened. The Archduke asked his companion what the young boy was doing alone and unaccompanied on the grounds of his estate. He didn't know what to answer, because I was confused myself. Needy was very upset because he could not find his new friend to help him. He stood and cried furiously. He really wanted to get his spatula, and I couldn't find help. The Archduke asked him what had happened. The boy was so frightened by his arrival that he almost fell. The man looked at him and froze with misunderstanding, he inadvertently thought that he looked very scary since he was scared. The little boy looked at him in tears and did not know what to call him since he knew that this man was his dad. But he couldn't address him like that. The young boy said that he was looking for his friend to help him. The butler said Oslo was busy running errands outside, so they have to help him themselves and calm him down immediately. Needy burst into tears even more as he thought that no one could help him. He was very worried about his shoulder blade. The Archduke did not understand why the little boy was crying so furiously, and he did not know what could upset him so much. He picked him up and raised him like a kitten and asked why he was crying so much. Needy said that his shovel fell into the water and he couldn't pick it up from there.
The Archduke said that he would help him and asked where the spatula was. Needy was very glad that he would now help him get the spatula. He said where she was, and they went. While Needy called the Archduke uncle, he hesitated, since he was not used to hearing such things. The Archduke carried the young boy in his arms. He was surprised at how light the young boy was. He asked him if he was eating well. Needy was shocked and did not know what to answer, as he was afraid that he might be scolded. Needy knew that he might get a lot of scolding for eating too much. He remembered his grandfather saying that any scraps were a luxury for them. His grandfather claimed that food was a big waste of money for them. So, they were content with what was handed to them. Needy said he eats once a day. The Archduke was shocked. He asked how he could eat once a day. Needy was very scared of his reaction. He said that they eat once every two days. The Archduke was even more surprised and angry. The boy saw his reaction and said that they eat once every three days. Angrily, the Archduke asked what was going on and how they could eat like that. The man ordered his companion to call all the servants and promised to figure out what was wrong since he wanted to restore order to his estate. The Archduke did not understand how a girl could raise a child alone without servants and do all the household chores. He didn't understand how she could starve her son. The Archduke took the little boy's spatula from the fountain. Needy was incredibly happy that he was helped. The Archduke said that if the boy got into such trouble again, he could easily call him for help, and he would definitely help him. Karen came running to their noise. She hugged her son, and he ran to her in joy and hugged her back. She was very worried about him, as she had been looking for him for a long time. He said that his uncle helped him and took out his spatula. Karen was surprised at this turn of events. She looked in surprise at the men who stood near the fountain. The Archduke was very unhappy. The man looked at Karen and said that they had not seen each other for quite some time. He looked at her and noticed that she looked a little sick, but remained just as cold towards him. He looked at her and asked if it was true what he heard, that the little boy only eats once a day. Karen was very surprised by this question, and she said that this could not happen. The man looked at her and said that he personally heard such information from a little boy. The Archduke told the young lady that if she still found it difficult to live without a maid, she should have told him about it right away, instead of leaving the child hungry. Karen looked at him and said that there was a misunderstanding and everything was wrong. Karen approached her son and asked him if they ate three times a day and also said that she was baking him cookies. She said that he should tell his uncle the truth. He looked at her with misunderstanding and said that if he eats a lot, they will definitely yell at him. The Archduke was surprised. Karen hesitated a little and told her son that their life was much better now and different from before. The Archduke did not understand what was happening at all and how this could happen. The girl's words did not fit into his head. Karen looked at the man and said that her child was just a little confused and everything was fine with them. The man was furious. He did not understand what had happened to them before and why they were behaving this way. So he said he would check everything personally. He intended to go to their house and see how they lived. Karina was shocked. She didn't understand why he needed to go somewhere himself and watch how they lived. She did not interfere with him, and they went to the house. The Archduke did not walk, but simply flew, because he wanted to quickly figure everything out. He flew into the house at full speed. When they entered the kitchen, he saw food on the table. The man thought that the young lady was not lying to him, since there really was food, but he was puzzled, and he asked why there were so few ingredients in the food, since there was little meat and vegetables. He asked her how she could cook the same way for a whole week. He was puzzled by the whole situation. He asked her if she knew how to cook and use other ingredients. The girl hesitated. I didn't know what to answer. After thinking for a while, she said that next time she would buy other products. The Archduke looked at her and said that usually noble ladies do not know how to cook, and there is nothing wrong with that. He intended to send servants to her so that they could live in comfort. The girl was against strangers in her new home. The Archduke told his subordinate that they would dine together today, and he asked that food be prepared for them for three. The girl was puzzled. She didn't understand what was the matter and why he was doing this. The Archduke and Karen sat on the terrace and drank tea. The man asked the girl if she would like to find a teacher for her son. The girl looked at him and said that it was too early, since he was still very young. The Archduke was sure that the boy needed to learn the basics of etiquette and language. Looking at her, he said that from now on they would eat together. The girl was puzzled by his persistence. 
he said that even his work would not interfere with him, and he would take time to eat with them. Karen looked at him and asked if he himself didn't tell her to live quietly and not create unnecessary problems for him. She didn't understand why he so suddenly wanted her to change. The Archduke calmly sipped his tea. He said in a quiet voice that he had his reasons. Karen didn't really like this whole situation. She didn't understand why she had to talk to him and also eat at the same table every day. The thought alone made it difficult for her to breathe. The girl told her companion that if he wanted, he could only eat with her son. The man was furious at her words. He didn't understand what she wanted to say with them. Karen averted her eyes and said that they were still having an arranged marriage, and if he needed it, she would obediently play the role of the Grand Duchess. She looked at him and told him that he shouldn't care about her daily life. Since she doesn't want to be too noticeable, she also added that if a man tries for needy's sake, then he can freely spend time with him and build a trusting relationship, and she, in turn, will train him well so that he does not create any problems. The man was puzzled by her words. He wanted to continue the conversation, but the butler came and said that their dinner was ready. Karen said that she did not want to eat and asked if she could go to her room. The man was so out of sorts that he said that she was free to choose for herself. Karen decided to go to her room. She was very tired and could not think about anything except a warm bed. She lay down on the bed and fell asleep instantly. Needy was very happy about such delicious food. He praised the food very much and said that it was the first time in his life that he was eating such delicious food. From all the boy's emotions, it was easy for the Archduke to guess what he liked. The man asked the young boy how his mother cooked. The mischievous boy said that when his mother cooks, she is the most beautiful, because she wakes up and walks only when she needs to prepare food. The man was surprised by the boy's words, and asked him that his mother usually lies in bed all day. The mischievous boy confirmed his words, and said that if he himself does not tell his mother what he wants to eat, then she will not cook anything. The man thought that the girl might have a depressive disorder. Unfortunately, he had already met a person with such problems. He was a general who was captured by his enemies. He was a brave and strong man. But in the end, he committed suicide, in a prisoner of war camp. Even today, he could not forget this story. The Archduke's companion asked his master to be a little kinder to the Duchess. The Archduke promised that he would do his best, as he was trying very hard. He asked his servant to free him up noon tomorrow. The Archduke came to his wife and said that they would eat together. Karen was very surprised because she didn't want to spend time with him. The girl wanted to be alone, but the man insisted that she sit with him. Karen got her son ready for school and told him to be sure to obey the teacher. The boy was happy to say that he would definitely listen to him and also added that the teacher praises him every day. She looked at him and told him to study well, and then when he grows up, he will be able to teach her. The boy looked puzzled at his mother, as she was a little pale. He said that she should eat very well. Suddenly, a man's voice was heard behind them. The Archduke told the boy not to worry and to go to school calmly, and he would immediately look and be sure to take care of his mother. Karina was in shock and did not understand what the man was doing near their estate. But the Archduke did not look at her. He asked the boy to be attentive in class. Needy was in a hurry to go to class. He wanted to quickly start his studies, and to celebrate, he ran to the carriage. The man called Karen to go with him and have lunch. She obediently agreed. When they were sitting at the table, she asked him why he was behaving this way. She was puzzled by his behavior and didn't want to draw too much attention to herself. He looked at her and said that no matter what, they are still a family and should pay at least a drop of attention to each other. She was puzzled by this answer and said that she would not mind if he ignored her. The man was puzzled. He said that he was against this and asked her if she really considered him a very bad person. The girl did not answer his provocative question. She only added that he himself personally asked her to live a quiet life and not create any problems for him, meant nothing, and they should not live like strangers. She said that she would play the role of a wife perfectly in front of people, so he shouldn't worry. He said that wasn't what he meant at all. Karen asked if he was really afraid of her. The man did not answer. She said that she will do whatever is necessary to play her role properly, so he doesn't have to worry about anything. The girl decided not to continue the meaningless conversations and slowly walked away. The servant asked the man how their dinner was. The man was furious and said that their conversation did not work out at all. There was still no eye contact. It seemed to him that he was talking not to a woman, but to a soulless doll. The servant suggested that the master give some gift to his wife. 
The Archduke was angry. He didn't want to do such stupid things, because he believed that this was unacceptable on his part. The servant said that after all, she was his wife. The man said that it was only on paper, so he saw no point in pretending and playing. The servant said that he would not talk about it any more. He was worried that his master might regret what he had said. The Archduke thought it was funny, and he didn't understand what he might regret. Karen was very worried about her son, since it will be the first time he sleeps alone without her. The girl asked if he would cry. Needy assured her that he would be fine, and that he is quite an adult. Karen admired her son. She remembered how the servant told her that the boy was already much smarter than his peers. The man suggested that she let Needy go to a special training event. The annual event was attended by many children from noble families. Karen was very proud of her son, as he grew up a lot and became independent. The Archduke approached them. He wanted to see the boy off. Needy was very happy to see the man appear. To celebrate, he ran to him to hug him. The Archduke wished the little boy a good journey. Needy was very happy and thanked the man, and he hurriedly ran to the carriage. I said goodbye to everyone and left. Karen was very grateful that the Archduke came to see Needy off. She thanked him and asked if she could go now, because I didn't want to take up his time. He grabbed her hand and asked if she could talk in private. The man said that the conversation would not take much time. He looked at her and was surprised at how thin she was. He thought that she could break at any time. Karen asked the man to let her go because she was not comfortable. She was a little confused by the man's behavior. The Archduke apologized to the young lady for forcing her to dine with him. Unfortunately for him, he didn't think about her feelings. And that was quite selfish of him. Karen said that everything was fine, so there was no need for him to apologize. The man said that he didn't want to bother with getting married or having an heir, so he just wanted to find a partner with whom he could collaborate. He said that for this reason, he could not just leave the girl alone. Karen hesitated. She did not understand what kind of relationship he wanted to see between them. The man didn't know what to say. He was not ready for such a question. Hesitating a bit, he said that they could be friends. He said without even thinking about it. The girl was surprised. He lowered his eyes and said that she herself said that she did not want to have a close relationship. In his opinion, since they were supposed to live the rest of their lives together, he would like to dispel the awkward atmosphere between them. Karen did not know what she should do or how to behave, because she had never had a friend before. She didn't know what the terms of friendship would be, but she knew it would be a lot of trouble. After thinking a little, the girl accepted his offer of friendship. They shook hands as a sign of agreement and agreement. Karen was fast asleep. Suddenly, she heard a rustling and an incomprehensible noise. From a distance, a man's voice wished her good morning. The girl was in shock and bewilderment. She couldn't understand what he was doing in her room this morning. Her husband said that she sleeps for a very long time. The Archduke said that it was already midday, and he was very hungry while he was waiting for her. Karen was shocked and did not understand why he was waiting for her. Her reaction made him laugh. He said with a smile that he wanted to eat with a friend he had recently made. The man says Needy will be back soon, so she better get ready. He asked if he needed to call the servants to make it more comfortable and quicker for her to get ready. Karen said that she would get ready herself, since she was already used to it, and there was no need to call someone. The man sat and thought about her words. He thought her behavior was strange. Since most children of aristocrats live in abundance and almost never do such things on their own, they cannot even wash themselves or dress on their own. The man did not understand how she could cope completely alone and also manage the estate. The girl left the room wearing only a towel, the man was shocked. He thought she was crazy. Karen calmly said that she needed to get dressed, so much so that she asked her to turn away for a while. The man was shocked and furious. He shouted that she was completely crazy, because I decided to do such things in the presence of a man. Karen said that she completely forgot that he was in the room. He was at a loss and wondered if the girl really didn't fight anything. He stole a glance in her direction and saw that her back was covered in scars. The Archduke thought that she was like an unfortunate tree, battered by the wind. The man could not understand where they were coming from. He knew that such marks remain after many years of abuse. The Archduke remembered all the words and behavior of the girl and boy. His puzzle fell into place. He realized that she was repeatedly bullied and managed to break her will. He saw that she had completely lost hope. The man was walking down the corridor. 
he noticed that the girl was wearing the same clothes as yesterday. The man told his companion that she could call him by his first name. After all, it is customary for friends to address each other by name. Karen said that she doesn't fully understand why he wants to be friends with her. The man looked at her and asked with a grin if maybe she wanted to be lovers. The man asked if they should behave like ordinary spouses. Karen was scared and did not understand what he was talking about. She asked if she had somehow neglected her duties as his wife. The girl thought that he wanted to return her to her father. She frantically begged him to tell him what she had done wrong. He said that she had nothing to do with it, was not guilty, and had not done anything. Karen was at a loss. She did not understand what then was the reason for such strange behavior on the part of the man. Buster said he was very lonely. Karen decided to touch his forehead. He didn't understand what the girl was doing. Karen said everything was fine and he didn't have a fever, but she couldn't understand why his face was red then. Karen asked how he was feeling. Buster hesitated and said it wasn't very good. Buster thought he had a lot to learn before he could start communicating. Buster looked at the young lady and invited her to live together in the mansion. He said he wanted them to move in with him by the end of the month. He also said that if she was not comfortable, he would reduce the number of servants in the mansion. This was very unexpected for the girl. She asked if he even knew what he was talking about. Buster told her not to be so surprised, because he should have done this even earlier. But unfortunately, he was late. He wanted the girl to live like a real duchess. Buster was pleased that the girl knew the internal management of the estate, since it would be useful to her in the future. Karen screamed furiously that she couldn't move, and she said that if she did something wrong, then she would correct it. She begged him. Buster blamed himself for not thinking about her feelings and emotions. He sincerely did not understand what kind of monster could break such a chic young lady from high society. He grabbed her hand and said that she was a grand duchess from high society, and no one has the right to even raise their head and look into her eyes. Since the girl is the only grand duchess in the entire state, therefore, she is his wife. Buster promised her that he would never forgive anyone who tried to harm her in any way. He said that also her father would not dare to harm her again. Buster looked at her and said that she was free to live as she wished, and it would be okay if she wanted luxury or caused problems. He said that for now, there is no talk of murder, she can do whatever she wants. Karen laughed wildly. The man was shocked by this reaction, since it was the first time he saw her smile, her smile was sealed in his heart. She thanked him for his warm and kind words. The Archduke said that such a reaction symbolized an agreement. The girl asked with caution whether such actions would be normal. He looked at her and said with a smile that he would be glad if they moved immediately, namely today. Buster was serious. Karen shouted after him that she was not ready to live next to other people, but the young man assured her that there was nothing to worry about, since sometimes he also doesn't want to be among a large number of people. Karen asked Buster for his own room, but he just looked at her and said that they were spouses. Karen tearfully begged him. He was persistent and refused her. Buster approached her and said that he had already decided everything, but not as the one who bought her, but as her husband. Buster said that first, they need to take care of her nutrition. He took her hand and they walked. Karen held his hand and remembered that night. She remembered the warmth of his hands. He was very gentle with her then and now. Needy ran up to Karen. He, at full speed, rushes to his beloved mother. Needy told his mother that he missed her very much. Karen also missed her son. Buster pulled the boy away and picked up the kitten. He told Needy that he shouldn't jump on his mother like that anymore. The little boy did not understand what it was. He started crying. Karen said that everything is fine and she can wear it. But Buster was against it. He told the boy that his mother was very fragile and if such a big boy jumped on her, she might fall apart. Karen was shocked. She approached them and said that this was not so and that she could easily lift and carry her son. Buster walked up to Karen. He raised his hand and told Needy to look at his hand and his mother's hand. The girl said she was fine. Buster said he would leave her alone after she started eating normally. Buster carried threads in his arms and asked him how his children's seminar went. Needy said he made a lot of new friends. Karen looked at them as if spellbound. They seemed so happy to her, and she knew that this is what a father and son should look like. The Duke dismissed all the servants, and they were left alone. Karen thanked him. Buster asked her if she could hold meetings from time to time as a duchess. Karen said she would do her best. 
Buster said she didn't need to force herself. They sat at the table, and Karen felt its warmth. He filled her life with light. Buster woke up Karen, because she had a nightmare. The girl was embarrassed. He invited her to come to him. The girl went obediently. Buster hugged her with all tenderness. Karen felt very good next to him. The warmth of his body warmed her very much. Buster asked her if she wanted to work out. The girl didn't want to. She wrapped herself in a blanket and lay motionless. Buster said that she must keep her body healthy and pay more attention to your health. But Karen was skeptical. She didn't like this. Buster decided not to give up. He asked the young lady if she would like to go with him to the night festival. She was shocked. Emotionally, she untangled herself from the blanket and rushed towards him. Karen didn't expect Buster to be so close. She glared at him and became embarrassed. He said with a smile that he finally saw her face. Karen was not comfortable and asked not to come close to her. Karen said that it is difficult for her to be in crowded places. Then he decided to ask her if she would like to go to the masquerade ball with him. The girl was surprised. Buster said that there are several festivals throughout the year in the South, and this time the theme of the holiday will be masquerade. You must be wearing a mask. Karen asked if she needed to wear a mask to hide her identity. Buster said masks are required to enter. The girl didn't understand what was fun about masks. She was sure that it was very difficult to see in them. Buster looked at her and admired her. Every time he sees new emotions on her face, he wanted to see them all. Karen addressed him formally, but the man said that she should stop thinking about formalities and simply address him by name. He said that they were engaged and equal in title. Buster, looking at his wife, remembered the young stranger. He was ashamed that he suddenly remembered her in front of his wife. Buster said that she was a duchess, and she would have to communicate with a lot of people, and it will be better for her if she accepts it and gets used to it. Karen hesitated and said that she had no one else to talk to except her father. Buster told her not to worry, because they can practice communication from time to time. Karen was surprised and asked where and when they could arrange a meeting. Buster listened to her, but again remembered his stranger. He was sure that her voice was similar to the voice of a stranger. He had a familiar feeling. He didn't understand how there could be such a coincidence. Karen said that she always had to consult her father before going anywhere. She asked if she now needed to consult him before going anywhere. Buster said that she could find him in his office or ask Vincent where he was. Buster asked how old Knighton's was. The girl did not expect such a question, but she humbly replied that the boy was two years old. Buster believed that if the boy was two years old, plus nine months, she carried him. It was published for three years. He hesitated because there were too many coincidences. Buster asked how exactly the boy's father died. Karen was not ready for such questions. She was very nervous. Buster said that he was fond of adding the boy to the family register, and he wanted to get all the information about him. Karen said it was just an accident. Karen said that if this causes him problems, then he does not need to add threads to the family register. Buster was surprised and asked what she was talking about. Karen wanted to raise her son free and not be burdened by the title. She sincerely wanted her son not to fight for power. Buster asked, puzzled, what she was hinting at. Karen said that there are more worthy to become his heir. She looked away from him and said that it would even be good if he started a relationship with someone else. He didn't understand what she was saying. Karen said that he could easily have a mistress and she would not interfere with them. Even if necessary, she will move to another estate. Buster stormed out of the estate in a rage. On the way, he was met by Vincent. The man was puzzled by the gentleman's mood. He asked how it went. Buster was angry. He didn't understand how she could say such a thing. And who did she even take him for? Vincent kept asking the gentleman what had happened because he wanted to help him. But Buster didn't say anything, just asked how he thought he was cute. The servant said that the gentleman was attractive. Buster thought it was his wife who was strange. Buster asked Vincent where Thread was now. The man said the boy went on a mini expedition with his shovel. The man noticed that the gentleman loved the boy very much. He also said that he was very young, but for his age he was quite polite and smart. He believed that he was raised well. Vincent said that what interests him most is the fact that the boy is very similar to the master. Buster realized that he was not the only one who noticed the resemblance. Buster said that Vincent would turn to those in the shadows so that they would find and interrogate the man who worked three years ago for the Viscount, namely the one who knows all the internal affairs. 
Buster knew that there were too many similarities between Karen and that girl. Buster told the servant that he wanted to find out who really got Karen pregnant three years ago. He wanted to know only truthful and accurate information. The servant said that he would do everything and he had nothing to worry about. He walked away and left the gentleman alone with his thoughts. Buster decided to go check on threads on his expedition. Knightens was very happy to see the man. Overjoyed, he rushed into his arms. Buster asked the boy what he was doing. Needy said that he was building a sand house and invited the man to play with it. Buster looked at threads and saw himself in his youth. The boy was very similar to the master, with his eyes and even facial features. Buster showed the boy that you can mix sand and water and you will get a much better shape for construction. Needy was very happy about this discovery. Buster asked the boy if he ever wanted to see his father. Needy knew the truth, and he also knew that he couldn't tell his dad the truth because the monsters might take him away. Needy said that he only wants his mother and uncle. Needy approached Buster and asked if he liked his mother. Buster said that he liked her and Needy too. The boy was very happy. Buster asked the boy if he wanted to go to the night festival with him. Needy didn't know what it was. Buster said it was a very fun evening fair. Needy hesitated. He knew that mom didn't like it when there were a lot of people around. Buster asked the boy if his grandfather had ever hurt his mother. The boy hesitated, but he told everything. Needy said that grandpa visited mama every day. She often bled and therefore always cried. But the girl, on the contrary, reassured her son and said that everything would be fine. Needy hated his grandfather for everything he did. Needy cried furiously. Buster calmed him down. The man said that everything would be fine and that he was nearby. Needy said that they lived in a dark place, under the steps, and that it was very creepy. Buster was shocked. He couldn't believe that they had gone through such torment. He hated the Viscount, and I would never forgive him for such terrible deeds. Buster told the boy not to cry or worry. He will completely sort it out and repay his grandfather a hundredfold. Needy didn't understand what he was talking about. Buster said that the boy would no longer have to see his grandfather, since he would send him very far away. Needy thought for a while. He threw himself into Buster's arms and thanked him for his help. Buster said he didn't need to thank him since they were family. Needy says he will definitely beat the monster. Buster didn't understand what he was talking about, but he said he was looking forward to his victory. Buster asked Nitya how long he would continue to call him uncle, because he wanted him to call him dad. Needy hesitated. He knew that if the monster heard him call him daddy, he would take him away. Needy said it was too early and ran away from Buster. The man was surprised, but he smiled looking after him. Buster screamed furiously. He could not wake his wife. When did she wake up? He said that she promised to be ready by 10, and it was already half past 10. The girl was very surprised that she overslept. Buster said she asked for it. He picked her up and carried her downstairs. Karen was shocked by what he was doing. Buster said that it was time for the meal, so she would eat in what she was wearing. Needy ran to his mother in joy. Karen noticed that the boy woke up earlier than usual. He said that there would be a masquerade today, and he called his mother to go with them. Buster said he has a lot of different masks in his pantry, so they can pick any they like. Buster said he simply collects them because he attends such an event every year. While he was saying this, he blushed deeply. Karen was surprised that he could be shy. When Karen saw the food, she said that she was given too large a portion. Buster said this is the recommended serving for an adult lady. Karen started eating and really enjoyed it. The food was radically different from what she cooked. Seasonings gave the dish an even more refined taste. Karen said with amazement that she never thought that cabbage could be so tasty. Buster was glad she liked it. Buster said that he had received an invitation to the emperor's birthday celebration. Karen knew that attendance at such an event was mandatory for the court. She said she had no choice and had to go. Buster said that if she doesn't want to, then she doesn't have to go. Karen knew there would be consequences if they didn't come. Buster said it was his job to cater to the emperor's whims. But if she wants to try, then he will definitely help her. He had no doubt that Karen would be the most beautiful lady at the ball. Buster said her father wouldn't even dare approach her. He smiled and told her to remember that she was a duchess, so that no one can harm her. Buster said that if she had not yet found the courage to go out in public, then they could try another time. He also said that in any case, the choice is entirely hers. Karen said she needed to think about it. 
Knightons chose a bunny mask. Kieran was surprised and said that there were lion and leopard masks. Needy said that the rabbit has red eyes like him. Karen looked at Buster and asked why he chose the wolf mask. Buster said he was simply following the legend of the red-eyed wolf. Buster asked why she chose the fox. Karen said that the mask is the same color as Thread's mask. Needy said that his mask is friends with Mommy's mask. Karen said with a smile on her face that today is the day when the white fox and the white rabbit will become best friends. Karen said that if Buster is lonely, he can become a white wolf and join them. Buster didn't answer anything intelligibly. People on the street admired the beauty of the fair. Buster said that the spirit world masks are the main event of the festival. They say that if you wear a mask, you can enter the world of spirits. Buster asked Karen if she knew the folk stories that tell about the spirit world. Karen said that, unfortunately, she does not know the stories. Buster said that in the South, there is a legend that there is a secret passage through which spirits enter their world, but it opens only on summer and autumn nights. There was an opinion that spirits and some animals could pass through the secret passage. That's why people put on animal masks to penetrate the world, the spirits, and see what it's like. Karen was very interested. After all, she had never heard of such a thing. She was having a lot of fun. Karen was glad that they came to such a place. Buster saw a shop selling masks. He asked his companions to wait a little while he went and bought a white wolf mask. He said that he bought the white mask only because it was very rare. His dear companions knew that he was a deceiver. He just wanted to wear a white mask. Buster hurried them. They went deeper into the fair. Karen saw so many people. The girl remembered all their conversations. People looked down on and condemned the poor girl. She felt bad. Buster ran up to her. He didn't understand what was happening. Buster was very worried about his wife. The girl was in a panic. She heard many voices in her head. She frantically asked for help. Buster tore off her mask and began to calm her down. He shouted at her to breathe and listen to his voice. Buster assured her that she was a strong woman, who raised her son, giving him love and care. Karen came to her senses, and she quietly bowed her head on her husband's shoulder. He told her that as long as she was with him, she would be fine, and no one will dare to offend her. He told her that she should not give up. Karen raised her head and said that she would not give up. She knew that she needed to live for her son and for a better life. Her men were very worried about her, but Karen assured them one by one that she was fine. Buster offered them fried vegetables. Needy and Karen were skeptical about this treat. Buster assured them that the food was very tasty, so the locals have learned to cook them, and the taste is simply great. Karen didn't really like vegetables. As soon as they tried the vegetables, they were stunned. They really liked it. Needy devoured the treat in no time. Karen asked if he might want to eat her treat as well, since she didn't want any more. Needy said that he was full and wants his mother to eat. Buster looked at them and told them to stop acting like that and thinking about money. Karen just smiled and said nothing. She liked Buster's concern. Buster looked at Karen and said that she needed to buy more dresses. Karen said that the five she has are enough for her. Buster said he doesn't think that's enough. Buster thought for a moment and said that he needed to call the self-proclaimed traveling designer. Buster noticed that he was a very eccentric young man who traveled all over the world. Karen asked how he knew such a free soul. Buster said the man was in the empire a week ago. Karen noted that they were lucky. Buster asked Nidhi if he wanted a new toy. Needy was happy and said that he would really like to. Two months have passed. Karen and Buster were drinking tea. Needy ran up to them. He told his mother that he was already back. Karen was very happy. Needy asked his mother if she eats with her uncle. Needy saw Buster and said that he had already returned home. Buster said with a smile that he already understood that, and he asked the boy to go wash his hands. Needy ran to wash his hands. Buster and Karen were left alone. Buster said that they had become very close lately, and he asked when Needy would start calling him father. Karen was shocked. She couldn't think that he would say that. The girl hesitated and said that she thought he didn't like children. Buster said they are different, and he likes spending time with them. Karen said she was very happy that they were able to become good friends. Karen thanked Buster for being in her life. She said that if it had not been for him, she would have been sold to someone else, and it is not known what would have happened to her. Buster was shocked. Karen said that the Count wanted to buy it. Buster understood who the girl was talking about. Karen said that her father was going to sell her to the Count. Buster was shocked. The Viscount is crazy about money. 
Karen said that she did not want to be sold to the Count, so I came up with a plan. She decided, let's take it. Now Karen knew that she had acted rashly. She had made this choice when she was young and naive, but now she wished she had thought it through. She was scared at the thought of what the poor child had gone through. She knew that she had committed a sin that she could never undo. Karen felt guilty for not being able to give him a good life. Karen knew she had to find another choice, even if she had to hurt herself. But still, she had no choice but to get pregnant. Karen was grateful to Buster for giving her and Needy a new life. Karen didn't want to be a burden to him. She asked to be given time to think about the proposal. The man knew that even if it was a refusal, he had no right not to argue, since he respected her decision. But still, his heart was heavy. The man told the young lady that they had found a designer who would make her a dress. Karen asked what he was like. Buster said he looked a little like a fox. Karen said that he sounded very nice and she wanted to meet him. The man was sure that it was not cute at all, but on the contrary. Buster said that he would advise her not to look at him, as he might give her nightmares. Karen said she had a question for Buster. She was very interested in how attractive he was by beauty standards. Buster hesitated very much, because he did not expect such a question. He said that he did not even know. But he thinks that he is the most ordinary. Karen was at a loss. She heard his answer and realized that if he considers himself ordinary, then she falls into the category of ugly people. She did not consider herself as attractive as others. Buster told her not to get carried away with the young designer. Karen agreed with him, but she also asked why he married her. Buster was shocked. He didn't know what to answer. He asked why she asked so suddenly. Karina asked why he married such an unattractive woman like her. The man was in shock. He did not understand how such a ridiculous idea came into her head. The girl wanted him to be frank and honest with her. The girl knew that he refused the proposal of the princess herself. The man hesitated and asked how she knew this. The girl said that she has ears, and the servants always don't mind gossiping. The man said that they were not made for each other, since the princess is very narcissistic and often behaves like a child and wants all her whims to be fulfilled and no one dare to contradict her. But, unfortunately, it was quite difficult to refuse her. The girl said that she understood everything and understood that appearance is not important to him. That's why she became his wife. He was shocked and said that in fact everything was wrong and said that he thought she was very beautiful. Buster asked her if she's thought about the emperor's birthday. The girl hesitated. She didn't know what to answer him. She asked if there would be children there besides Needy. The man said that most likely there would be a lot of children, but they could be placed in a separate place so that they could have fun there. The young lady hesitated. She did not know whether she should go just for the sake of her son, but she wanted him to grow up surrounded by friends to have fun with. The man said that he wanted her to think about herself. He asks her if she doesn't want to take revenge on her father. The girl was confused. He said that they bullied her and even wanted to sell her to the Count, and all this could not help but leave scars on her heart. The man said that if she needed his help, she just had to ask, and he would solve everything. Karen said that if he helped her, she would undoubtedly be grateful. But after such actions, he would become someone she would fear and disrespect. The girl added that then she would not grow up at all and would be afraid all her life. Karina always thought about this. She really wanted to deal with her father on her own, and after that, she will be able to do something more. But now she most wanted to move on and become something she herself can be proud of. The man agreed with her and said that then he would inform the servants so that they would prepare everything for the trip to the emperor's holiday. Karen looked at her husband and asked him not to leave her alone, because next to him she feels that she can move on. He looked at her and said that if this is what she wants, then he promises to never let her go. A young man was walking late at night, accompanied by young gentlemen. He said all the way that he was very cold. Other men hurried him along, but he was angry and said that he was very cold and that his hands were freezing. He also said that he was hungry and could not go anywhere else. He asked them to leave him in that place. One of the men couldn't stand his whining anymore. He grabbed him, threw him on his back, and carried him. The young master shouted to let him go, since he could walk with his own feet. He shouted that he would be sued for kidnapping. But the man said that if he wanted to do this, he would have to turn to the archduke. The young master was furiously angry. He shouted that he would kill everyone and would never forgive them for such behavior. He shouted that he was a skilled designer and did not stir the potatoes. 
The young gentlemen hurried as best they could. They did not want to stay late because they wanted to complete the assignment quickly. Karen thought about her husband's words. She knew that she wanted to take revenge on her father, but unfortunately she didn't know how to do it. She was still weak, and even now she was shrouded in fear of the man. The girl was afraid that her father might find out who the real father of her son is and do something very bad towards them. He could use this connection to discredit the Archduke. Karen thought that if her husband found out the truth about her son, he would most likely think that she was simply taking advantage of him. But the girl knew that sooner or later, she would have to tell him the truth. Karen knew that to do this, she needed to become stronger, much stronger. Buster came to Karen. He gently touched her and said that she was a real sleepyhead. He told her that she needed to get ready as the designer had already arrived. Buster said that she slept for quite a long time and asked if she was suffering from insomnia. The girl said that she was fine and just felt very warm and cozy in bed. She asked when her room would be ready. Buster hesitated a little. Karen said that she stayed in his room for a short time, but he told her that he would prepare a room for her. The man looked at her and asked if she would like to stay with him. The girl hesitated. She said it wasn't that she didn't want to stay in the room with him, but she was causing him a lot of trouble. Buster said she shouldn't worry about anything. He can sleep in an uncomfortable position and doesn't care about her nightmares at all. The girl was a little surprised. The man said he would always be there for her and asked if she didn't feel better when he stroked her back last night. Karen felt very awkward. She said that she urgently needed her own room in order to avoid such situations. Buster said she had nothing to worry about. He asked if she had fewer nightmares. Karen thought about this for a moment. Buster said that it was all because he slept next to her and added that she had nothing to be ashamed of at all, since every person needs someone who will always be there. Karina considered herself a burden, because at their first meeting, he said not to bother him, and she didn't want to disturb him or put a spoke in his wheels. The young man said that everything was not like that at all, and added that if she did, he wouldn't mind her bothering him, and said that she could always call him for help. Buster said that they had to leave already, so it was time for her to get ready. Karen was very surprised by all his words. She was very pleased. She noticed that he was blushing a little. Karen saw Buster and asked why he was waiting for her. The man said that he would accompany her. Buster said he also intends to take advantage of the opportunity to purchase some suits. Basta said that they would not be able to meet tomorrow, as he had important matters to attend to. Karina said that he was fine. She understood everything. He hesitated a little and asked if she was interested in where he was going. Karen asked if she could find out this, and it wouldn't be too strange if she asked this. Buster said that she can do anything, since she is his wife. Karen smiled a little and asked what would happen tomorrow. Buster said that he was cursed from birth, and when night fell, he lost his sight. Karen remembered the day when they first met. He had slightly different eyes. Now everything became clear to her. Today she understood why he didn't recognize her. Buster looked at his wife and said that she didn't look surprised. Karen said that everyone takes their time, and he was no exception. She also added that he wouldn't. They forced them to tell them, and that's it, if he wasn't ready yet. Buster thought she was a very understanding wife. Entering the room, they saw chaos and a sleeping young designer. Buster was angry. He grabbed him by the shirt and dragged him to the balcony. He intended to teach him a lesson for such rude behavior. The young man screamed furiously. But later, he noticed that they had not seen each other for a long time and said that the Archduke looked beautiful, as always. The man said that he could spare him if he made a hundred dresses. The young man was shocked. He did not understand how he could make only clothes. Buster yelled at him and said that then he would die. The young man, under pressure, completely agreed and said that he would do everything. Sitting on the floor, the young designer told Buster that, despite his high position in society, he could not threaten to kill anyone. Buster said that it was very funny for him to see how he was now trying to get out and reminded him that he had ignored his orders. The young designer asked why Buster needed so many dresses. The young archduke said that he needed clothes for his wife and son. The young man was shocked that Buster got married and had a child. Buster said the boy was attending classes. The young man hesitated. He did not understand how he could have such a big child and said that this was probably some kind of joke. Buster introduced the designer to his young wife. The young designer was shocked, and he frantically wanted to find out the truth from the girl. He persistently asked if what the Archduke said was true. 
Karen confirmed her husband's words. The young man was puzzled and could not believe what was said. The young designer introduced himself, and Karina remembered his name. He was a famous designer, and all the high-status women wore his clothes. The young man said that she thought everything correctly, and he is the second son of Count Pallet. But since he did not inherit his title, he traveled and created clothes. Buster said he was kicked out of his family. Karen was surprised and amazed. Karen said that she may have offended him with her reaction. The young man said that not at all. He was just a little surprised, since they usually look down on him because the countess renounced him. Karina said that she really admires his decision. He simply followed his own path and also followed his dreams. And no one became a hindrance to him. The young designer thanked her. Karen said that she had not seen his work. A young man approached Buster and said that he was wearing clothes today that he had sewn with his own hands. The girl was surprised and really liked it. She praised him. The young man wanted more praise and a different reaction. The girl said that she doesn't know much about fashion and asked for his forgiveness. The young man said that he would definitely make dresses for her. He also added that he did not know if he could make a large quantity, but at least he could make enough for her daily life. The girl smiled and became embarrassed. She said she didn't really need much and asked her to focus on her son's clothes. Buster told the young man to work on his formal dress for now, as it was needed for the emperor's ball. As for the rest, he can take his time. The young man thought that he had not called on his little helpers for a long time. Karen was surprised. The young man said that he calls upon the spirits of water and wind. He used a special cloth because it could not be found in this world. Karen had heard of spirits entering their world, but she had never seen anything like it. The man explained to her that he extracts fabric from the essence of wind and water, because it is very light and breathable, and it's special because not many people can make one like this. The girl frantically admired the beautiful fabric. She had never seen anything like it. Karen asked if she could accept such an amazing thing. The young designer thought it was strange that the noblewoman was surprisingly so modest and polite. The girl showed her husband the fabric, and they admired her together. Karina said that she would like to make a lot of cute clothes for her son. Buster said that children grow up very quickly, so they shouldn't make a lot of clothes for him now. Karen thought that he was right and that it made sense. He looked at her and said that they didn't want clothes to go to waste. The young man stood and watched their conversation. He was shocked that Buster was actually enjoying the conversation. He had never seen such a tender expression on his face. He knew that Buster always ordered people around. Or threatened them when they argued with him, but he couldn't believe that someone like him could talk so tenderly to someone. It was an amazing sight. The young man said that he needed to take measurements. Karen agreed and began to undress. Buster was shocked. He stopped her. He asked what she was doing and why she was undressing. Karina said that this way you will get the right size. Buster was puzzled by this reaction. He asked who told her to do this. The girl said that the designers were from a boutique. Buster asked if the designers and tailors were men. The girl confirmed his words. He asked if they did anything strange. She was puzzled and said they didn't do anything and asked why he was asking. The man said that it is not necessary to undress to take measurements, and moreover, male tailors very rarely had the opportunity to earn money with significant data. The girl froze. Karina was puzzled as she realized their strange behavior at work. She apologized to her husband. Buster asked why she was apologizing. The girl could not answer him. She was confused by the whole situation. A servant came to them and said that threads would return home. Buster told Son to go first. He wanted to be alone with his wife and talk a little. The dream obediently went down. He realized that after everything that had happened, he had to leave them alone. Buster and Karen were left alone. Buster said he wasn't mad at her. He is only angry with the Viscount and those pathetic tailors. The girl realized that this was all due to her ignorance. Buster said he wanted her to be honest with him. Buster said he had a hard time understanding what she was thinking, so he wished she would be more direct. Karen was puzzled and shocked by everything that was happening. Karen said that it seems to her that there is a lot in the world that she does not know and cannot do. Buster didn't want her to constantly apologize. He wanted her to be happy and smile more often. He asked what she really liked. She replied that she was her son. Buster asked her if she likes anything else. Karen looked at him with a smile and said that now she likes him too. 
She said that it had been many years since she had met someone as kind as him. Buster was surprised. He understood who she was talking about. Buster asked if Needy's father had been kind to her. The girl remembered that night with a smile and warmth and said that the young man was very gentle with her. Buster was a little angry. It was unpleasant for him to hear this. He asked whether it was true or that the man was dead, because if there is a chance that he is alive, then he may come to them in search of his son, or he may blackmail the girl. Karen said he wouldn't do that. Buster couldn't understand why she trusted him so much. He said he needed to take care of the report, so they can only see each other at dinner. Buster left the room when suddenly he saw a scout from behind him. Buster asked what he wanted to report to him. The man said that they examined the villages and realized that the epidemic had begun. Buster told him to make sure that every village isolates the infected. He also told the man to pay attention to the water supply system. Buster said that if someone sick tries to get into the region, they will need to detain him and find out what he is sick with. Buster asked the young man to convene all interested parties so that they could develop a plan of action. The man obediently agreed and left the Archduke, leaving him alone. Buster knew he would have to leave home for a while. He was very worried about being away from home. He sincerely hoped that nothing would happen to his family. It's already dark. The man was left alone with himself. A curse awaited him. He knew that the curse ran in the blood of his family. It could never be removed, and what matters is how much he read and searched for information. He had heard rumors that some had healed on their own, but the records were made so long ago that there was no proof. However, his father was freed from the curse. But, unfortunately, I did not consider it necessary to tell what the secret was. Instead of telling, he handed over the title of Archduke and disappeared along with his wife. Buster had not seen his father and mother for more than five years. He was bored and did not understand how his own father could do this to his own son. Buster was puzzled. He was pondering his curse when he suddenly heard a knock on the door. He was shocked because he did not expect anyone at such a time and on such a day. Karen knocked on his door. He was surprised that she came. He didn't expect to see her at all, Karen asked in a gentle voice if she could go into his room. The surprised man allowed her to enter. He was waiting for her looking out the window on a dark night. Karen calmly entered the office. Buster was surprised that she decided to come to him on such a night. He calmly asked what brought her to him at such a late hour. She looked at him closely and realized that she was right. Since her husband and the man from her last meeting were the same person, Karen looked at him and with all the warmth in her voice said that she came because it was already too late. But he never came to her. Buster smiled and asked if he was worried about him. Karen said she was worried about him. Buster invited his wife to sit next to him. Karen obediently agreed. The girl noticed that the man had a hard time lately. Karen looked at him and said that he should be careful in the dark and especially not go into dark alleys. Buster was surprised and didn't understand why she was talking about dark alleys. Karen was confused. While talking with her husband, his image and their first meeting appeared in her head. The girl hesitated, but collected herself and said that she said that because she was worried that he might rummage around somewhere. Buster smiled and thanked his wife for her concern. Buster looked at his wife and asked if something was bothering her or if there was something that was causing her inconvenience. Karen looked at her husband with tenderness and said that everything was fine, and at the moment, her life was like a fairy tale compared to past events. The girl said that her life is like a fairy tale. Buster was surprised. Karen looked at him and said that sometimes she herself was surprised since her life had changed so much. The girl thought a little and said that all the changes began with Knighton's. Buster said with sadness in his voice that this would not have happened if she had not met that man three years ago. Karen said with a smile that that meeting was a turning point in her life. She knew that it was destined by fate itself that they could meet again. Buster was upset. And looking away, he said that he believed that she had never been able to forget the man. Karen smiled and said that she could not forget him. She knew that she would not be able to forget him because he was sitting right in front of her. Buster was puzzled and did not answer her. She looked at him intently and did not understand why Buster was so upset. Karen looked at her husband, smiling, and was silent for a while. A moment later, Karen said that she was very happy because she was able to meet him. Buster was surprised. Karen said that she felt like she had a reason to move on after arriving at the estate. She said he gave her the strength to move on and watch her son grow up. 
Buster said he understood her feelings perfectly. Karen was surprised, but she was pleased. Buster said that he was an infant terrible because he constantly rebelled against his father. Karen was amused by his words and burst out laughing. Karen looked into her son's room and told him to wake up, since it was already time for him to go to school. Karen was surprised that her little boy slept longer than her, and she asked with a smile what was wrong with him. After she came closer, she was alarmed as she saw his condition. Karen was scared and did not understand what was wrong with her son. Karen ran to the bed and frantically screamed and called her boy's name. Needy made long sounds. She was scared and excited. Karen asked her son what was wrong with him. She realized that he seemed to be sick. She took him in her arms and realized that he was all on fire. Karen was frightened by her son's condition and did not understand who could help him. Karen rushed to the door and screamed furiously. She called her husband. Karen rushed into the corridor with lightning speed in search of her husband. She screamed and ran. Karen hurried to her husband and, not noticing the steps, stumbled and almost fell. Karen caught Buster. She was very happy to see him. He was puzzled by his wife's behavior. He calmly asked if she was okay. Karen, in the confusion, did not answer. She was excited. Buster asked what happened, as she was very puzzled about something. Karen, in turn, tearfully screamed that Needy was sick. Buster froze in shock, looking at his wife. Buster looked at Vincent and told him to call Holly immediately. Vincent, in turn, said that he would do everything immediately. Buster looked at his wife and said that they needed to go back to Thread. Karen agreed with her husband, and they went to the boy. Karen looked at her husband and son. She was happy and relieved when her husband came to her aid. But unfortunately, she realized that she felt useless. She knew that if she were a perfect countess, she could make the decision on her own and wouldn't have to worry about Buster. She understood that then she would not have been so worried. She was furiously angry with herself because of her helplessness. Buster looked at the boy and said that they had problems. Buster looked at the boy and said, Karen should stay away from her son until the doctor arrives. Karen was at a loss because she did not understand what her husband was talking about. Buster stared at Little Thread. He calmly asked if his wife had noticed a rash on his body. Karen said that when he spoke, she remembered seeing a rash on her son's body. Buster said the boy likely contracted an infection. Karen was shocked and excited. She asked with tears in her eyes if it was really an infection. She didn't believe him until the very end. She did not understand where and when her son was able to catch the disease. Buster said that an epidemic was beginning to spread uncontrollably in the South. Because he was very busy for a while, Karen did not understand how her son could be infected with the infection. Buster said that most likely one of the peers was infected and later infected Needy. Karen was seriously scared. She ran up to her husband and screamed furiously. She wanted to know if there was a cure for the disease and if it was fatal. Buster was calm and asked his wife to calm down and pull herself together. Buster looked at his wife and said that he would do everything in his power to help Nitty. He promised to find a way out and asked her to trust him. She looked at him with tears in her eyes but did not answer. Karen looked at her son. He lay feverishly in bed. She was very worried about him and wanted him to run around the house carefree and joyfully again. Karen looked at her husband and asked if he had definitely contracted the infection from the South. Buster said he thinks that's probably true. He said doctors haven't been able to pinpoint it, but they're working on a cure. Karen looked at her husband with tenderness and said that she understood everything. Karen thought for a moment. She passionately wanted to do everything for her son to get better. Karen said that she was sure that she had already read somewhere about similar symptoms. She knew that there was, albeit a small, chance of saving her son. Karen knew that she would do everything possible to make sure her son recovered. Buster was surprised because he didn't understand where she could read such information. Karen looked at her son and said that she thought he already had these symptoms. She knew that he had already gone through a similar illness and was able to recover easily. The doctor came in after apologizing. Buster was glad that Holly came. He sincerely hoped that he would examine the fry and tell him what was wrong with him. The doctor was a little puzzled that his master called him Holly, since his name was Holland. Buster said it was unimportant and the boy needed to be seen immediately. The doctor agreed with the gentleman. The doctor began the examination. He was puzzled by the boy's condition, because I immediately understood what was going on. Needy had a fever, and he was squirming in bed. His condition wanted better. Karen and Buster looked at the boy intently. Cold looked at the boy, puzzled, and said that Needy had an infectious disease that appeared in the South. 
He was alarmed by the young master's condition, since he knew that he could not really help him. The doctor looked at Mr. and Mrs. and said that all his symptoms were the same as an infection. So he was sure that the boy fell ill with exactly the same infection that was spreading in the South. He was saddened by the fact that he was right. The doctor looked at Karen, puzzled, and timidly asked who she was. Since he had not seen her before, and Buster did not introduce her, Buster looked at Karen and said that this was his wife. The doctor was surprised because he did not know that his master had wives. He was very surprised because he knew that Buster had no intention of getting married. After a moment of surprise, the doctor greeted Karen and said that he was very pleased to meet her. He also introduced himself, saying that he was the doctor of the southern region, and he was also the personal physician of the Archduke. Holland said they were currently conducting research to find a way to stop the epidemic. He said that fortunately, the disease was discovered very early, so the boy's prognosis should be good. He still hoped that he could help the boy. Karina was glad to hear the doctor's answer. She hoped that with his help, her son would recover faster. Buster looked at Karen and said that she had recently mentioned a book that described similar symptoms. Of course, he was surprised that she read such books, but he hoped that information of such content would help the doctor. The doctor was shocked because he did not know that there was such a book on medicine. With doubt and caution, he decided to find out about the book. Karen looked at the doctor. She said that she had read about such symptoms before. She also said that she thought it might be helpful if she shared information like this. She knew that the book could help find a cure for her son. The doctor was at a loss and would like to quickly find out what book this is and what information is there. He was surprised that there was such a book containing information about the epidemic. Since he read all the publications of scientific books and did not find a single mention of such symptoms, Karen said the book was called Traditional Medicine but she didn't think the author was listed. She knew that there were several lines written there, but there was no mention of the author. The doctor was a little confused, because he realized that the book did not represent any kind of scientific information, but he knew that it was necessary to read it. He realized that if there was no author, then the book was undoubtedly written by a commoner. He didn't know if there was any point in taking advice from such a low-grade source. He was tormented by doubts. The doctor looked at Karen puzzled, and asked if it was true that the book described similar diseases. Karina said that it was in that book that they described similar symptoms and also clearly described a rash that looked like grains of rice. The doctor was at a loss. He realized that he urgently needed to read the book, but he was puzzled that he needed to read such a simple book, and he understood that a respected doctor like him should not touch such things. But at the same time, he could not ignore the master's request. Karen and Buster looked at each other, puzzled. They desperately wanted the doctor to quickly begin studying the information and treating the boy. The doctor said that he understood everything and would definitely find the book to read it carefully. Buster asked the doctor to hurry, because if there is useful information there, then it will be very useful to them. The doctor said he would do everything. Holland saw the book and realized that the symptoms there were the same as those of the disease from the South. He was surprised and amazed that such a book contained a lot of useful information. He realized that the book he was holding in his hands was full of information about diseases that he had never even heard of before. She also explains the symptoms and treatment in simple terms. He was very surprised, as it was very convenient for ordinary people. He looked at the book in surprise and studied all the information about diseases. On one of the pages, he read a message from the man who wrote the book. The man dedicated the book to a girl who was already in heaven and to everyone who cannot afford doctors to cope with various ailments. Holland was shocked because he realized that he, as a doctor, was ashamed of himself. Many common people in their country did not have the opportunity to spend money on a doctor, but still, the young doctor never offered them his help, and after reading the book he felt uneasy, since he did not help ordinary people when they needed the help of a doctor. Meanwhile, an unknown commoner created such a book. Holland understood that his delusion led to him not noticing such a valuable book. He was amazed that an ordinary person could learn so much useful information about diseases previously unknown to the world. Smiling to himself, he thought that the world was truly huge, and there are many diseases in it that are very rare. The doctor did not understand how the girl knew about such a book. He wanted to chat with her and find out more information about such books, if any. Cold realized that at the moment there was no point in wondering where the Archduchess got such a book. He needed to get to work urgently. 
Karen was next to her son when suddenly Buster called her. She was surprised and jumped up sharply. After she heard her husband, she felt sick. Buster was puzzled and approached his wife. He hugged her because he was very worried about her. He asked if she was okay. Karen, confused, said that everything was fine with her, but she was just a little dizzy. Buster looked at Karen and said that the doctor and his colleagues had finally developed a cure. Karen was very happy because she hoped that her son would get better soon. Buster looked at his wife and did not understand how she could be so exhausted in just a few days. Buster told his wife that she shouldn't worry so much anymore because soon everything would get better and the boy would get better. Karen was very happy and hugged her husband with a smile on her face. She hoped that her son would get better soon. Holland brought medicine to his master and said that with its help, the epidemic should go away. No. Buster was a little surprised and asked if Holland was sure of his words. Holland said with a smile that the medicine has helped other patients recover faster. So the young boy should soon forget about the disease and the doctor also added that no side effects were found. Buster looked at the medicine and told the doctor that he made the medicine faster than expected. Buster was very happy about this since the boy would soon get better and forget about all the torment. The doctor smiled and said that thanks to the Archduchess, they were able to achieve a breakthrough and do everything at an accelerated pace. He sincerely thanked the girl for such a book, because thanks to such a book, they were able to find a cure. Buster was surprised and asked how exactly the Archduchess helped in creating the medicine. The doctor said that in the book, she recommended there was a recipe for this medicine. Buster was puzzled and surprised, as he did not expect this. The doctor said that that book was written by an unknown commoner, and in the book was hidden wisdom and knowledge far beyond his own. Buster was amazed by this news. He did not expect this. He looked at the doctor and was a little surprised that such words came from the lips of a selfish doctor. The doctor looked at Buster and said that such things were interesting, since this was not a new disease. The disease was similar to the flu and had already been known about it before. The doctor said he continues to study the book along with his research. Buster was a little puzzled and said he was glad to hear that. Buster said that the doctor did a good job and was able to create a medicine. Holland thanked his master for the kind words addressed to him. Buster said nothing as he was puzzled by the whole situation. Buster came to Karen and asked how she even knew about such a book, since such a thing was not something that was usually kept by a noble family. Karen looked, averting her eyes into the distance and said nothing. She didn't know how to talk about something like this. Buster said that if she didn't want to say anything, then she didn't have to force herself. He knew what she had gone through, and he truly felt sorry for her. He didn't want to put pressure on her and force her to do something she didn't want to do. Karen was a little puzzled and said that she simply had no choice. Buster didn't understand what she was talking about. She said that when they lived in the basement, she had to treat her son on her own. Buster didn't let her finish because he was puzzled by her saying that they lived in the basement. Karen said that at that period of her life, she simply had no other way to save her son. Karen said that living in a dark basement, they had no other choice. Buster was angry and confused that they had to live in the basement. He couldn't understand how her father could torture her like that. Karen said that fear brought tears to her eyes almost every day, and there was no hope that Nitya would recover. She said he was getting worse and worse. Karen said that she begged her father to call a doctor, but it was all in vain. She said that she finally persuaded the headmaid to help her. Karen, on her knees, frantically begged the young girl to help her, as she really wanted her son to get better. Karen said that the girl took most of her jewelry and gave her that book in return. Buster silently listened to her story. He was angry that she had to go through this. He knew that he could not forgive the Viscount for such an attitude towards her. Karen said that luckily she had some savings left and was able to buy the herbs she needed. Karen said that if it weren't for that book, she could have lost her son, and that was the only way she could take care of him. Buster was angry and puzzled. He looked at her and asked if she didn't want revenge after all the torment. Karen was a little puzzled. Of course, she wanted this very much. However, the girl knew that revenge could consume her. She said she didn't think she was ready to do anything for revenge. In order to calm the situation, Buster said that a little later, he would give her something. Karen was surprised that her husband wanted to give her a gift. Buster said he wanted to give her a small gift that would help her move on. He looked at her and said that she would know what he was talking about when she saw him. Karen was a little puzzled, but she wanted to see what kind of gift he was going to give her. Buster stood on the street, lost in thought. 
Karen was sleeping peacefully when she suddenly heard a noise. Knightens ran to his sleeping mother and threw himself into her arms. She was very happy to see her son. She was glad that he had recovered and could now run carefree and enjoy life. The young boy said that he is already much better and feels like a cucumber. He was very happy to see his mother after a long separation. Karen was very pleased that her son was already feeling much better and said that she felt much better when he was around. After a joyful hug, she realized that she was in bed. She was puzzled because she didn't realize when she had fallen asleep in bed. Buster came to them and said that he brought her because he noticed that she was uncomfortable. Buster said they needed to wash up and have breakfast. Buster says Needy can go first. Knightens was very happy and said he would go. Needy went to the servant and he took him by the hand and they walked together so that the boy could put himself in order. Karen looked at Buster and said that from now on she will live in the same room with her son. She looked at her husband, puzzled, and said that if they lived in the same room, she would have been able to understand earlier that he was sick. Karen said that her son is still a child and she cannot leave him alone. Basta was a little puzzled, but didn't say anything to her. He knew she was right, but he also wanted her to beat next to him. Karen said that if they did this, Buster wouldn't have to prepare a room for her. Buster knew that his wife was right, but he was not at all happy about it. He didn't understand what was happening to him. He didn't understand why he felt so pathetic and insignificant. Buster looked away and said that she could do whatever she wanted. Karen was very happy and thanked her husband. Buster looked at her with anger. He didn't want to see her like this. Buster said that in a few days, they should leave for the capital. He asked Karen how preparations were going for the ball dedicated to the emperor's birthday. Karen said she is working to control her anxiety and hope that everything will go without problems. She didn't want to let him down. Karen thought for a moment and said that she would like to take lessons from Vincent on how to be an archduchess. Buster was surprised by his wife's statement. He looked at her and asked if he understood correctly that she wanted to take lessons on how to be an archduchess. Karen said that from that moment on, she refused to accept the way she was living now and she would work hard to become an exemplary mistress of the estate. Buster was pleasantly surprised by what his wife said and said that this was a very, very great idea, and he was sure that she would handle everything perfectly. Karen said that then she would go and wash herself. Karen began to change clothes and thereby embarrassed Buster. He asked in shock why she began to change clothes here so abruptly. Karen was a little puzzled by this question and said that she wanted to wash her face before breakfast. Buster looked at his wife, puzzled. He saw the scars on her back. In a trembling voice, Buster asked if her scars hurt her. Karen said that they no longer hurt and she was fine. Buster asked if he could ask how she got those scars. Karen said that she just did something wrong. Buster did not understand what she could have done wrong and to whom. Karen said in a trembling voice that they couldn't sell her to the Count and that's why she was guilty but she also sometimes thought that it was because of that mistake that she was able to meet Buster. Buster stood and looked at her. He said nothing to her in response. He was angry at the person who did this to her. Karen looked at him and said with a smile that she was very grateful that he accepted her with her son. She was very glad that she was able to leave that house and all its inhabitants. Buster looked at her and said with a smile that he had never once thought of her as a burden. Buster said, looking at his wife, that when he found out about her, he thought they would make a good couple. Karina was at a loss. She didn't understand why he said that. Buster walked up to her and hugged her. He said he was grateful to have received such a wonderful gift. Karen was puzzled as she felt a strange feeling. Her heart was beating faster, and she was confused about why. Karen shyly asked if he had ever loved anyone. Buster asked her with a smile whether he understood correctly what she was interested in, whether he had ever loved. Buster knew that he was not sure of the veracity of his feelings. Buster, thoughtful, said that three years ago he met a girl. He looked at his wife, puzzled, and said that he had never met anyone like her since then. Karen was pleasantly surprised because she realized that he had not forgotten her. Her heart fluttered at the thought that all this time he remembered her. She was glad because she thought that he had forgotten her a long time ago and never again remembered their meeting. Buster looked at his wife and did not understand her reaction. He was genuinely surprised by her reaction to his words he assumed she would react differently. He looked at her and asked if she was worried that he might meet her again. Karina looked at him in surprise. She knew the whole truth and knew that she didn't have to worry about anything. Buster came closer to her, hugged her and pulled her towards him. She was shocked as he kissed her. Karina looked at her husband in confusion and bewilderment and asked what was wrong with him. 
He smiled at her and asked what was wrong. She was embarrassed and said that you understand everything since they are still a couple. She said that if this is what he wants, then she will always obey him. Buster was a little puzzled and asked her not to say such things again. Buster said there's something about her that makes him wild. He looked at her and said with a smile that she was saying such words as if it were his fault. He said with a smile that it was still his fault, since his heart was breaking. Karen laughed wildly. Buster looked at her with a smile. He really liked her smile. He looked at her and said that he thought she was beautiful when she smiled. He would like to see her beautiful smile all the time. Even though she was indifferent towards him, Buster said that at such moments he feels like she is returning his feelings. He said his heart was fluttering and it was confusing him. Karen was shocked by her husband's statement. Karina looked at him and said that since she said before and says now that they are a couple and she was ready to do anything for him. Buster looked at her, shocked. She said that if he ever wants to do it, then she will do everything to satisfy his needs, since this was her responsibility as a wife. After all, they were a married couple. Buster looked at her, dumbfounded. He was angry with his wife. After such words, he distanced himself from her and wanted to leave her as soon as possible so as not to talk about such a topic anymore. Karen was dumbfounded and did not understand what the problem was. She knew she didn't say anything like that. She looked at him and called him. Buster asked her to stop such an awkward conversation. It was unpleasant for him to hear this. He really wanted to hear different words. He said that he would go and wash himself, and he quickly left Karen, leaving her alone. They rode in a carriage, and Karen felt so bad. Buster looked at her exhausted and asked how she was feeling. He began to worry about her well-being. He looked at her and realized that, most likely, she was not used to long rides in a carriage. He knew she would feel better soon after she got some rest, but it was still hard for him to look at her. Karen looked at him and said that she was fine. She didn't want to worry her husband about her well-being. Buster, looking out the window, said that it seemed like this was her first time traveling so far. He said that there was a manor in the capital, so they could rest there. Karen felt very bad and agreed to rest for a while. Buster smiled at her and told her that she didn't have to worry about anything. He looked at her with a smile and said that he promised her that nothing would happen to her. He said with a smile that no matter what happens, she just needs to behave in such a way that no one can boss her around. Smiling, Buster said, even if it was the emperor himself. Needy was surprised and glad that his dad could protect his mom, even from the emperor himself. Thread said that it seems that Buster is very strong. Needy was very happy and shouted that he wants to be as strong as Buster. Needy shouted that if he can become strong, he will definitely protect his mother and defeat the monster. Karen was puzzled by this behavior of her son and asked what monster he wanted to defeat. Buster, in turn, sat and smiled. He watched them. He was having a lot of fun. Buster looked at him and asked if he would like to learn how to fight with a sword. Needy shouted that he would really like it. Karen was excited and did not understand why Buster wanted to teach her son how to use a sword because her son was still very young. Needy, in turn, shouted that he wanted to learn how to wield a sword. Buster looked at them and said that he knew how to hold a sword when he was Thread's age. Karen was puzzled and said that he was only three years old. Needy shouted that he really wanted to learn. Buster looked at them and said with a smile that in that case he would teach him on a wooden ball. Buster said that when they return home, he will find him a good teacher. Buster said he would personally make sure the boy didn't get hurt. Needy was very happy. They calmly drove to their estate after a small discussion. Needy fell asleep on his mother's lap. Karen quietly stroked her son's head and hugged him. She admired her son. Buster looked at them and said with a smile that she was a very caring mother. Karen said she just wanted to make him happy. Buster said she shouldn't worry about her and her son being unhappy. He said that he promises her to do everything so that they are inconspicuously happy. Karen looked at her husband and thanked him for his kind words addressed to her. Buster looked at his wife with a grin. Looking at her, he conceived an insidious plan. A moment later, he sat down next to them. Karen was a little puzzled after he sat down next to her. Buster looked at her and said that it was necessary to give the boy in the other seat a rest, because it seemed to him that they were uncomfortable. Buster tenderly took the little boy in his arms and told her not to worry and everything would be fine. Karen said it was okay and she could sit next to him. Buster moved closer to his wife. Karen was a little surprised and did not understand why he pressed so close to her since there was a lot of space on the seat. Buster looked at her and said that she was right and there was quite a lot of space here. She was puzzled and did not understand why he sat so close to her then. 
Buster smiled and said he just wished he could be closer to her. Karen was surprised and did not understand why he decided to sit next to her. Buster looked her in the eye and said it was because he just wanted to take care of her. She was surprised by her husband's words. Buster looked at her and realized that she was very naive. He was surprised that, being so naive, she was even able to get pregnant. His thoughts were confused, and he did not understand which man Karen spent her first night with. Thoughts about this drove him crazy, no matter how he tried to forget everything, but all the thoughts worried him. He wanted to find the man and put him in his place. He looked at her and said that the reason why he cares so much about her is very simple, because he just wants to. Karen looked at her husband in surprise. She was embarrassed by his words. They looked at each other for a moment. Buster pulled her closer to him, and they merged in a passionate kiss. Buster looked at his wife, and it seemed to him as if something warm filled his heart. It was the first time he felt like this. Karen looked at her husband and called his name. He, in turn, said nothing, continued to kiss her furiously and with all passion. They arrived at the estate and were greeted by servants. Karen was a little puzzled as she saw a lot of strangers. Buster gently took her hand and told her that everything would be fine and she had nothing to worry about. Karen smiled because she felt very strange, but was sure that if her husband said so, then everything would be fine. And she really felt much better. The young lady greeted Karen and said that she was very glad to meet her. The young lady introduced herself, saying that her name was Ten and that she was the butler who was in charge of the Cayen family mansion in the capital. Karen was a little surprised to see a female butler. Karen smiled and said that she was very glad to meet them. Ten asked them to go to the mansion. They followed Ten. Karen was surprised, since the mansion was quite large. Ten said the bedroom will be on the second floor. The young lady showed them the bedroom and said that this was the young master's bedroom. Buster put Needy on the bed and told Karen that he had to go because he had things to do. He smiled and asked her to have a good rest. Karen was a little surprised and asked if he was tired, because they were on the road for a long time. Smiling, Buster asked if she was really worried about him. Karen said that, of course, she was worried, since they were both on the road for a long time, and the butler watched everything that happened. She was shocked by her master's behavior. The shocked lady looked at everything that was happening and did not understand whether it was a dream or reality. She was surprised at her master's behavior. She knew that the owner was a cruel and irritable person, and how, what would happen, he immediately pulled out a sword. She was shocked because seeing him smile was like pulling a star from the sky. Buster smiled and said that he would return immediately after the report, and for now they could rest. Buster looked at Lady and said that he had a conversation with her and they needed to go out. Ten noticed how his smile immediately disappeared. Buster asked Ten how the Emperor knew they had arrived. Tan said she was sure he had his sources. Ten said that it was said that he and his wife would appear before the meal. She also said that the Emperor said that he would fulfill any of his wishes. Buster, in turn, said that he still refuses the Emperor's offer. Ten said that if he did not come and accept the offer, he would be arrested for treason. Buster said in a calm voice that the Emperor could do whatever he wanted, and asked Ten to convey his words to the Emperor. Buster asked her if there was anything else she wanted to tell him. Ten said that there was nothing more, and that was all the information. Buster said she could send him a letter. Ten was shocked, and did not understand how she could send such a letter while holding such a position. Buster said that it was quite reassuring to have such a competent butler. Ten thanked him for such words. Tan said a report came in from detectives. She said they found him. Buster looked at the lady, puzzled. Ten said they needed to talk in the office. Buster looked at the young man and asked him if they had learned anything about Karen's father. The young man asked the gentleman for forgiveness. The young man said that the whole situation had been going on for such a long time, so that no one remembers what happened then. Buster said it was strange that two of the three women who quit died. The young man looked somewhere into the distance and said that the whole situation was very strange. Buster looked at him and asked if he checked on the last maid. The young man said that there were difficulties with this issue. Buster was surprised and did not understand what difficulties could arise with a simple maid. The young man said that the maid died immediately after he contacted her. Buster was confused and shocked. He realized that the situation was very strange. Something was bothering him. The young man said that he assumed that the Viscount had a hand in this. Buster looked at him and told him to find more clues. Buster said that the young man should be more careful. The young man said that he would certainly be careful. Buster looked at him and asked if he had found the woman he dated three years ago. 
Buster frantically wanted to know who the stranger was. The young man understood that if he took one more step, there would be no turning back. He remembered his girlfriend, who told him that she really wanted to live like a person, and asked him for help. The young man said that the girl he was dating was the daughter of a count. The young man said it was Yvette Pearson Ian E. By saying the girl's name, he understood that this was the end for him, and there was no more choice. Buster was surprised because he did not know that the count had a daughter. The young man said that the girl was an illegitimate child. Buster was puzzled by this news because I didn't expect to hear such information. He realized that apparently the girl was not treated very well at home, and that is why she wandered the streets that day. Buster asked his ten if by chance there would be a girl at the celebration. Tan said the girl had never attended such an event before. Buster looked at Ten and said that he had to meet the girl. Tan said she could set a date for the meeting. Buster was puzzled and understood that after their meeting, rumors would spread. He was puzzled and was sure that most likely she needed his help. He understood that he needed to arrange a meeting quickly and he needed to keep his mouth shut. He looked at the men and asked how they were doing in gathering information about the Viscount. The man said that the report was already ready. Buster was very interested to know what was in it. The man said there was more than enough information in the report to be sure he was a terrible person. The man said he didn't think it would be difficult to bury the Viscount. Buster smiled and told the man to be ready to do it at any moment. Bastar said that while Karen is recovering, it is imperative to catch the Viscount. Buster, walking down the corridor, asked Ten. Nothing strange happened while he was away. Ten said everything was fine and nothing happened. Buster asked Ten how often the Emperor bothered her. Ten, a little embarrassed, said that she brought letters every week. Buster asked Ten, what was the situation with the security at the estate? Ten said there were some small attempts at attack, but they managed it completely and there are no more problems. Buster looked at Ten and said that it was hard for Karen to be around a lot of people. Therefore, he asked her to take care of her and also take her every word as his. Ten smiled and said that she understood everything and would do everything. Buster told her to also watch her diet and not forget about desserts and snacks. Ten said that she understood everything and would carry out all his instructions. She asked if he would like to go to the office. Buster said that today he would go to the room there. She was very surprised. When leaving, Buster told her not to follow him, and if he needed her, he would find her himself. Ten was surprised and really liked his happy expression and bowed obediently. Buster realized that all the questions took him longer than he thought, and he hurried to his seven. Walking into the room, he asked his wife for forgiveness for being late. He entered and saw that his wife and son were sleeping. Buster was very glad that they were resting. He really liked the picture he saw. He looked at his sleeping wife with love and tenderness. Buster walked over and sat on the bed, stroking his wife. He thought they looked pretty cute as they rested. Having undressed, he lay down next to his family and wished them good night. The young lady asked Shuri why he was so nervous. The young man hesitated and said that this was not so. Shuri said that the whole situation was too dangerous. He said that if he did get caught, she would be in danger. The young lady looked at him and said that if the man found out everything, then she would be fine, and told Shuri that he thinks too much about her. The frightened young man looked at the young girl and said that the Archduke was a very frightening and cruel person. He was very worried because he was afraid that she might get hurt because of him. The young lady smiled and said that there seemed to be a lot of things bothering him. She came closer to him, stroking his face, and asked him not to worry. She also said that no one would find out about anything if they both kept their mouths shut. Shuri understood that he needed to remain silent, since now there was no point in regretting what he said. He knew that they were sailing in the same boat, and if they chose to live or die together, then they would live. The young lady said that she could survive, and it was all thanks to him. He looked with pity and annoyance, and said that he really hoped that her wish would come true. The young lady said that everything would certainly happen as they had planned. She looked at him smiling, and said that she was sure that he could become an archduke. She said that after everything, she would certainly expose all the dirty deeds in her family. The young man was a little puzzled, since there was already one archduchess. The girl looked at the young man angrily. She was furious and screamed whether he really wanted her to become the Archduke's mistress. She screamed at him in rage and was confused because he had said before that he wanted her to be happy. The young man was shocked by the girl's reaction and said that of course he wanted her to be happy. He looked at her and said that he sincerely wanted her to be happy and live as she had always dreamed. He knew he wanted this more than anyone else. 
The young lady looked at him and said with a smile that she was hundreds of times better than the archduchess, since that woman had an illegitimate child from another man. The young man looked at her and said that everything was as she said. Looking at him, she asked him to tell him more about the archduke. She came closer to him and, looking into his eyes, asked him to tell him about the character, tastes, and habits of the man. Shuri hesitated and said that he would tell her everything. He knew he had to tell everything, but it was hard for him. The young lady hugged the young man tightly and thanked him for everything. Shuri blushed and became embarrassed. He said there was nothing to thank him for. In parting, Yvette asked Shuri to be careful and under no circumstances get hurt like last time. The young man in response also told her to take care of herself. He looked at her and said that she could contact him if she needed anything. The young lady thanked him with a smile on her face. They said goodbye, and the young lady waved after him. The young man was puzzled. He did not understand why such a lovely lady had chosen such a dangerous path. He wished her a happier and calmer life than now, but he knew that he could do anything for her. He knew that for the sake of the girl he was even ready to go to hell, after everything that happened. Shuri knew that he would first have to kill the woman the master had met three years ago. He knew that he had to find her before everyone else and kill her. Shuri understood everything perfectly, but it was very difficult for him. Karen looked at her husband and asked, very discreetly, that she was worried. Buster, in turn, was fascinated by her beauty and looked at her. He looked at her again and said with a smile that she was worrying too much. He asked her not to worry about anything. Buster took his wife's hand, and Karen was very surprised, because she did not expect him to do something like that. He looked at her and asked with a smile if the fact that he took her hand calmed her down. Karen, embarrassed, thanked him for his concern. Buster said that there was nothing to thank him for, because they were a family. Having calmed down a little, Karen decided to pull herself together. The Duchess did not put on a mask of calm, so that everyone could see how strong she was. Many people came to greet the Emperor on his birthday. Karen walked past a large crowd and told herself that she was not afraid at all. She knew that she was only shrouded in fear because of her father's power and cruelty, but now nothing could harm her. Buster looked at his wife and told her to go. Karen agreed and smiled at her husband. She was very glad that he was there and that he supported her. Karen took her husband's arm and hurried to go with him so that they could greet the emperor. Karen looked at us and asked if everything was okay with Needy. Buster walked over and hugged his wife. He asked her if she could just focus on him today. Karen was shocked by his words. His words confused her, and she hesitated for a moment. She didn't understand why all of a sudden he was telling her this. Buster smiled and told her not to be nervous. She smiled and thanked him for his support. She truly appreciated what he did for her. Buster stared at his wife. He couldn't take his eyes off her. Looking at his wife, he saw her father in the crowd. He was furious that he took that man away. The Viscount, seeing Buster, bowed to him. Buster looked at him with contempt because he understood that he was a monster and an animal. He furiously wanted to wring his neck. He wanted to deal with it quickly. Buster came closer to his wife and said that her father was looking for her. She was shocked by such words. Karen, in turn, knew that they could meet, but she really didn't want it. Having calmed down a little, she said that everything was fine and it was okay that he was looking for her, but it was hard to see her herself. She said that as long as her son was safe, she had nothing to fear. Karen was only worried about her son and that no one would harm him. Buster looked closely at his wife. He liked her attitude. He knew that she could defeat everyone. Karen looked into the distance, lost in thought. She stood and gracefully drank champagne. Buster was surprised when he noticed a young lady in the crowd. The embarrassed girl looked at him. Buster looked at her intently and did not understand who she was. He didn't understand why she was looking at him so intently. Buster couldn't believe everything that was happening. He thought that most likely it was that girl, but he found it hard to believe. The young lady, embarrassed, decided to leave, but in doing so, she further aroused Buster's interest in herself. Buster realized it was Yvette Pearson. He was puzzled by his discovery, because I didn't expect to see her at the reception. Buster looked at his wife and called out to her. Buster looked at his wife with annoyance and asked if she remembered the story he told her earlier, namely, that he met a woman three years ago. Karen was puzzled because she did not understand what he wanted to tell her. She was scared and didn't understand why he was suddenly talking about it now. She said she remembered the story. Buster looked at her and said that he actually knew who the girl was. Karen was shocked and turned pale in front of her husband. Buster didn't hesitate to say it was Yvette Pearson. He also said that it seems that the girl is present at the celebration today. But he was embarrassed that she could attend the celebration. 
Karen was shocked. From such news she did not understand how he knew this, and also did not understand what to do. Buster said he wanted to take a look at it. Stunned, Karen stood and did not understand what was happening. Buster was a little puzzled and said that he was very sorry, and he thought that she did not want to hear that from him, since in all likelihood it was unpleasant for her. Carrie was shocked by the whole situation and did not understand what was happening and how this could happen. Buster said that the girl is the illegitimate daughter of Earl Pearson. Surprised by everything that was happening, Karen asked if it was really Yvette Pearson. Buster was no less puzzled than she was. He said that it was true, since the detective had found out everything. Buster said that he ordered to find her in case something happened. Buster said he needed to talk to her a little. Karen looked at him, puzzled, and asked if the girl was there. Buster said she was behind Karen. Karen didn't answer and just turned around to look at the girl. Turning around, she saw the face of a puzzled young lady. She couldn't believe what was happening. Karen looked at her intently and did not understand who this girl was and why she was pretending to be someone else. The young lady looked at Karen with contempt. Buster looked at his wife and said that he would definitely return to her soon. Karina said that everything was fine and he could go talk to her. Karen looked after him and did not understand why on earth the girl was pretending to be Karen. Buster walked up to the young lady. The girl was a little surprised by his arrival. Karen looked at them and did not understand why the young lady did this. She watched how they communicated. Buster and the young girl decided to leave the premises. Karina was at a loss, as her heart suddenly began to ache. She looked at her leaving husband with puzzlement and longing and felt very bad. After thinking a little, she drank some champagne. Karen thought maybe she should go to the doctor. She saw that everyone began to bow. Karen noticed that the emperor had come down to them. Karen bowed. She had never seen the emperor before, since he had only been on the throne for three years. The emperor looked intently at his subjects and asked them to raise their heads. Karen stared at the emperor and was shocked and also embarrassed that he was very handsome. She thought to herself that he was like a treasure. The emperor looked at Karen. He was surprised at such unearthly beauty as a woman. Seeing her, he beamed and began to smile. The emperor looked at all his subjects and thanked them for coming through the difficult journey and coming to him. He said he hoped they would enjoy the comforts here. Karen was surprised and looked at him closely, since his aura was completely different from the previous ruler. Karen, stunned, stood and gazed at the emperor when suddenly someone called her. Her father approached the archduchess. She was puzzled by his arrival, as she did not want to deal with him. He came closer to her and began to furiously say that she must think that she was worth something to marry the archduke. He was angry and just asked her if she thought it would change anything. Karen looked at her father and said that he guessed correctly. She angrily pushed him away, took his hand, and said that now he could not harm her son. She told her father that he was right, and now she thought she was worth something. Buster was passing by and heard her voice. He was surprised. Karen looked at her father with contempt and anger and said that she thought she could do anything. Buster was perplexed and embarrassed, as he really liked her words. He learned that she was exhausted and lived in filth. He knew that her wound was much larger and deeper than he could have imagined. Buster was desperate to help her. He wanted her to be able to rise on her own. He wanted her to spread her wings and be able to fly. Karen looked at her father with contempt and asked him to move away from her. She said that no one knows what she can do to him. Buster looked at her and was very happy, because I always wanted to see with my own eyes such a beautiful image of my wife. The Viscount looked at his daughter with contempt and anger and said that she was wretched. Buster decided not to watch them anymore, but to come up and figure it out. He came closer and greeted the Viscount and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. The Viscount began to shake and said that the Archduke was right, since they had not really seen each other for a long time. Buster looked at him with contempt. He understood that the Viscount was still a pitiful person, since he groveled before the strong, but took it out on the weak. Buster called his wife. She looked at him and called him by name. The Viscount was shocked. He asked his daughter with rage and bewilderment how she dared to address the Archduke by his first name. Buster looked at the Viscount and asked him with a smile what was wrong with his wife calling him by his first name. The Viscount looked at his daughter and asked her how dare she go beyond what is permitted. Buster angrily said that since he was her husband, it was up to him to decide whether she should go beyond what was permitted or not. Buster looked at the Viscount and said that the wedding had been rushed, and they had not been able to visit him since. Buster looked at the Viscount and said with a grin that next time he would prepare a room for him. The Viscount bowed before the man and said that he was honored to be with them. 
Buster hugged his wife and told the Viscount to go and mind his own business. The Viscount, in turn, agreed with the Archduke and wished them a good evening. Karen looked at her husband in surprise and said that he appeared unexpectedly in front of them. She didn't understand what he meant. Buster looked at his wife and said that he thought it would be a good idea to bring the Viscount down to earth. The man moved closer to her and asked if she didn't like how he addressed the Viscount. Karen looked into his eyes and said that everything was fine. She was glad that her husband protected her. Buster said that just a minute ago she was quite beautiful just when she was able to answer the Viscount. Karen was puzzled and asked if he had made the video, as she was very ashamed of her behavior. Buster said that he saw everything and the spectacle, and it was absolutely beautiful. He said he couldn't take his eyes off her. Karen looked at him and said that she is no longer afraid, since now she can show herself when she knows that he will not be able to do anything about it. Buster couldn't stop looking at his wife. He said everything was just great. Karen looked away from her husband and said that in her life, she once believed that he was still her father and completely relied on him, but later she found out that he killed her mother. The Archduke was shocked by what he heard. He couldn't believe what his wife said. He did not understand how you could kill your own wife. Karen said that later she would definitely tell him everything in more detail. Karen looked at the young lady, puzzled, and asked her husband how the conversation with the young girl went. Buster said he didn't think she had anything to hide, but he thought she needed help. Karen looked at her husband, puzzled, and asked him if he was sure that this was the same woman. She wanted to quickly bring the young lady to clean water. Buster told her wife that the girl told exactly where and when their meeting took place. Karen was puzzled and didn't understand what was going on. She was worried about one thought. She didn't understand who could lie to him. Karen asked, puzzled, if it was possible that the detective had betrayed him. Buster looked at her and said that this simply cannot be. Karen said that she understood everything, but she never stopped doubting those he trusted. She knew that for her husband's sake, she needed to find out everything as soon as possible. Karen thought a little about how others' husbands called her. Buster looked at her and said it was their turn. Karen was puzzled and did not understand what he was talking about. Buster, with a dissatisfied face, said that they needed to greet the culprit of today's event. Buster said that he was very annoyed by this whole situation, but he had to give a gift to the emperor. All high-ranking guests approached the emperor in turn to greet him on the holiday. The tired emperor looked intently at the young people. Karen quietly asked her husband why he was last in line, since usually dignitaries go first. He looked at his wife and said that he was an exception. The emperor looked closely at the young man and asked with a grin why he wasn't watching his face. He said that no matter how annoying he was, he had to always watch his emotions. Buster said it all gets tiring. The emperor looked at them and said with a smile that he simply had no words, and he also added that they had not seen him for a long time. The archduke told the emperor not to address him as a commoner. The emperor looked at him and asked for forgiveness. Karen watched all this. She was in shock and did not understand what was happening. The emperor decided to come closer to them to get to know the young lady and the beautiful wife of his friend. The emperor approached the archduchess and said that it seemed to him that this was their first meeting. Karen was perplexed and looked intently at the emperor with big eyes. The emperor looked intently at the guests, and especially at Karen, and said that it seemed to him that this was the first time they were talking like this. The emperor looked at the young lady and asked if her husband was treating her well. He was interested in one question, how she had to live with his bad new one. Karen was puzzled by such questions. She was surprised because she heard that her husband had a bad character. She knew that this was not true at all. Karen looked at her husband and said with a smile that her life was very good, since her husband was very nice. The emperor was shocked, and I thought that, most likely, he had simply misheard. Karen looked at her husband with a smile and said that he was very sweet and kind to her. Buster was very pleased with these words addressed to him. He stood and admired his beautiful wife. Karen said that if it weren't for her husband, she would never have mustered up the courage to come to the holiday. Karen, admiring her husband, said that she was very proud of him. The emperor said with a smile that it seemed to him that they were getting along quite well. He said he thought their love was truly deep. Karen smiled and said that it was true. The emperor looked at the young people with puzzlement. He looked at them intently and did not understand whether all this was true or just a pretense. He knew that there was something he didn't know. The whole situation seemed funny and interesting to him. Since he knew that there were many bad rumors about the Viscount, he knew it would be a lot of fun to see what Buster would do. Buster looked at the emperor and said that since they had already greeted him, they would already leave. 
The emperor said with a grin that Buster was talking nonsense. The emperor said that he would give them a chance to enjoy the event. Buster said not today. The emperor said that they could not leave the holiday without his permission. Karen was in shock and did not understand what was happening. Buster, with fury in his eyes, asked the emperor what he wanted to say with those words. The emperor smiled and said that they had much to discuss in private. He also added that it was time for them to sort everything out. The emperor said he had something to deal with and he would need it. The emperor looked closely at Buster and asked him if he was doing a good job of putting things in order. Karen realized that the emperor wanted to deal with the current power. She understood that a new emperor had ascended the throne, so everything was legal. The emperor looked at the young lady and asked Karen if it was okay if she had to stay for a few months. Karina replied that it was okay, since she understood that work and helping the emperor came above all else. The emperor looked at her and said that her husband had good reasons for this. The emperor looked at her intently and smiled. The emperor said that his sister did not have many friends and asked her if he should introduce her to his sister. Karen hesitated a little as she realized that she could become a friend of the empress. Karen asked the emperor for forgiveness. The emperor was at a loss. He never expected such a reaction. Karen said that she didn't have much experience making friends, so she didn't think she would be suitable for it. The emperor was stunned, and such an answer was unexpected for him. He could not believe that she refused the chance to make friends with his sister. Karen said that she would leave them alone so that they could talk normally. The emperor agreed with her. He was fascinated by the woman as she was very graceful. The emperor looked at her, following her with his gaze. Buster looked at his wife leaving and told the emperor that he could not handle her. The emperor was shocked. The emperor looked at him and asked what he thought about Yvonne. Buster said with a grin that she was not a tamed wild horse. The emperor smiled and said that it was difficult to argue here. The emperor asked the servant to come up to them. The servant brought a glass of wine. Buster told the emperor to drink less as they had a lot to do. The emperor said that he need not worry about it. The emperor looked at Buster and asked him to lend him his butler ten for a month. Buster looked at the emperor with a serious look and said that he could not fulfill his order since the girl had to accompany his wife. The emperor asked to replace her. Buster rejected his offer. The emperor was furious and asked him to send a butler for at least a week, but Buster did not give in to his persuasion. The emperor was furious and did not understand what Buster needed. Buster said he didn't need anything. Buster looked into the distance and told the emperor that it would be better if he cast aside empty hopes. The emperor was shocked and asked Buster how he could do this to his friend. Buster said that's exactly why he says things like that. The emperor looked at Buster in confusion and asked if there was any way he could help him. Buster asked the emperor if it was clear from her behavior that she did not want to. The emperor sighed heavily and said with a grin that such words were being spoken to him by the newly made groom. He could not just give up. Buster said that he did not want to get involved in his love affairs. So, he asked the emperor to do what he wanted. The emperor said with a grin that he had no heart at all, adding that not everyone was like him. Buster was perplexed and asked what exactly the emperor meant. The emperor looked closely at Karen and said that the girl was very beautiful and smart. The emperor asked since when he loved her. Buster didn't know what he was talking about. The emperor looked at his friend with a grin and asked when he fell in love with her. Buster looked at the emperor dumbfounded and did not answer. A moment later he said it wasn't love, just caring. The emperor said that he was in no position to worry about others when he could not even solve his own problems. Buster said that, of course, he was sure that he wanted to get closer to her. The emperor was a little surprised. The emperor asked Buster to bring his son, as he desperately wanted to look at him. Buster was embarrassed and puzzled by this request, as he knew that his wife would be against it. Karen heard some noise. Karen. Karen was puzzled and asked what was the matter. Ten walked over and quietly whispered to her what the problem was. Karen was stunned by the news Ten told her. The young boy furiously shouted at Nidhi that he was bad because he didn't even have a dad. Nidhi tearfully shouted at the boy and said that this was not true. The young man shouted to Nidhi that he was not the real son of the Archduke. Nidhi, in turn, shouted that this was not so and grabbed the boy's hair. Nidhi threw the boy to the floor and started beating him. He shouted that he was lying. The boy shouted that he was not lying and it was all true. Karen entered the room and saw her son. She was shocked by what was happening. Karen was surprised because the boy was happy and fought well. She approached the boys and asked her son to stop fighting. Knighton saw his mother. He was glad to see her. He rushed to her and hugged her tightly. Karen hugged her son and he in turn cried furiously. She hugged him tenderly and asked him to stop crying as her heart was breaking. 
Karen said that he had done something wrong and asked him to apologize to the boy. The boy was a little surprised. Karen looked at the boy and asked if he was hurt. The boy hesitated and said that he was fine because he started it first. The little boy looked at the floor with his eyes down and said that it was all because he offended them and he didn't do anything to him. Karen was surprised and realized that the boy was so mature. Karen heard someone talking to her. The little boy heard his father's voice and began to tremble. Buster and the boy's father approached them. Nitty looked at the Archduke with eyes full of tears. He ran up to Buster so he could hug him. Karen was shocked by everything that was happening. Knightons, in turn, cried furiously. Buster picked up his son and hugged him tightly. The red-haired man was shocked that his son. Corian constantly fights to no avail. The man approached Karen and asked for forgiveness for his son. The little boy was scared. Karen gave them a furious look. She looked at them and asked if he thought that before reprimanding children, adults should watch their words and actions, because eventually, children will begin to repeat all the words. She remembered how a little boy shouted to her son that he didn't even have a dad. Karen said that it was awkward to watch how a child was scolded for only repeating the words of adults. The man hesitated and stood for a moment looking at her and realizing the whole situation. The man, lowering his eyes, said that she was right. He realized that he had made a mistake on his part. Needy approached the boy and asked for forgiveness for hitting him. Knighton said that his mother was the best in the world, and therefore he did not like the way he spoke and ran around his beloved mother. Knightons wanted to protect his mother, as she once protected him. The boy looked at Needy embarrassedly and said that he was right and he was to blame. The little gentlemen shook hands and asked each other for forgiveness. Karen looked intently at her son and did not understand when he had already grown so much. She was proud that she was able to raise such a kind and strong boy. She knew that, although he had been through a lot, he was still very strong. The parents were looking intently at their sons when they suddenly heard the voice of the emperor. The emperor approached them. He observed the whole situation, and it seemed quite funny to him. Buster looked at the emperor and angrily asked what he was doing here. The emperor said with a smirk and an innocent smile that he was of course worried about the archduke's son. The emperor came closer to the boy and asked his name. He wanted to meet such a brave kid. Nightens came closer to his mother, holding her dress, and said that his name was Nightens. He was scared because he was afraid of the emperor. The emperor smiled and said that this is a very beautiful and good name. The emperor said that the boys must have been very surprised, but he also said that it would be better for them to return. The emperor looked closely at Ten. The girl became embarrassed and looked away. She didn't want to meet his gaze, since their relationship wanted to be better. Buster walked up to his wife and said it was time for them to go. Karen looked at Ten and asked if she could learn more about the duties of a housewife. Ten looked at the archduchess and gave her the book. She said it contained budget proposals. Karen was surprised. Tan showed her the main books and said that one of them contains the amount that is allocated for the madam, the other budget for maintaining the kitchen and food expenses. She also added that the duchess can use all this in the mansion and beyond. Karen was surprised and asked Ten if they had so much money for the holidays. Ten said that the Archduke did not like the public opinion on this, he did not really carry them out, and in the end, a large sum was collected. Ten looked at Karen and asked if she thought that was not enough. Karen looked closely at the document and said that there was more than enough money. Karen looked at all the books and said that she had never seen such books before. She looked intently at the document and asked, Ten is correct. Does she think that it is there that says the date when the money was received, the items purchased, the partners of the transaction, and how much money is left? Ten looked at the girl in surprise and said that everything was exactly like that. She asked her how she knew this. Corinne said she assumed so based on the size of the amounts. Ten said that everything was right. She was surprised, since the girl simply figured out the records by looking at the numbers. Ten liked the fact that the girl easily figured out everything. She knew that you can rely on such a person. Karen looked closely at the documents and said that regardless of the transaction, they would need a receipt. Ten looked at the Archduchess and said that they have a separate book for storing receipts. Karen was surprised because there were a lot of books and everything was so neat and organized. Ten looked at Karen and said that in the future, this room will become her office. Karen was very happy as she could not believe that such a beautiful place could be her personal office. She was very happy because she had something to do. She was sincerely grateful to her husband for providing her with such an opportunity. Karen was very pleased and joyful in her soul, since her husband gave her freedom and opportunity. 
she knew that now it was her turn to repay him for his kindness. Karen looked at the girl and called her. The young lady came closer to her and said that she was listening to her carefully. Karen understood that in order to repay her husband for his kindness, she herself must reveal the whole truth to him. Karen looked closely at the girl and asked if there was a place where she could find information secretly. Ten asked her what information she needed. Karen looked at the girl and said that it was personal. She hoped that Ten could keep it a secret from Buster as well. Ten understood that this was very dangerous. She asked if this was something that should remain secret from the Archduke, then it could be a little dangerous information. Karen said that this is not about something that could harm Buster or anyone in this house. When the time comes, she herself will tell him so that she doesn't have to worry about anything. She wanted to tell him herself, but only when the time came. The girl said that there was a place called the Data Guild, but as she knew, in order to get any information from them, she needed to come to them in person. Karen asked where this place was. Karen thought and did not understand why the young girl needed to lie about meeting Buster. She didn't understand what the young lady wanted to achieve. Karen arranged a tea party. The girls were very happy. Karen looked at all the women and could not believe that she would give in to such people. One of the girls said that she was very happy because on the fifth day, there were more of them. Karen knew that she could not constantly rely on her husband. She understood that she was obliged to hold her place in high society on her own, if only for the sake of her son. One of the ladies looked at the Duchess and asked if she had heard the news about Yvetta Pearson. Another lady asked if it was true that she was an illegitimate child. They began to frantically discuss the young lady and said that the Count was having an affair with one of the waitresses in the restaurant. They discussed all the latest rumors about the Count and his adventures. Karen looked at them and realized that they were also talking about her, and she was sure that they were also saying some nasty things about her. One of the ladies looked at Karen and asked if she knew anything, since people saw that the Archduke was talking to Yvetta Pearson. Karen hesitated and said that she was not sure. She understood that it was better to behave naturally. Karen said that she knew only those rumors and nothing more. She understood that she had to be calm in such a difficult situation. The young lady said that the girl behaved very ugly and knew no shame at all. Some said that she even lived in a dirty barn. Karen listened to all these rumors and caught a glimpse of the girl. Karen stared at the young lady. Karen was a little puzzled, as she also looked at her with an intense, angry gaze. Karen felt uneasy at the young lady's gaze. Yvette looked at her and mocked her with her braces. The girl saw that the Duchess was looking intently at this too. They were shocked because she really didn't know her place. Karen was a little dumbfounded and didn't answer. She was truly puzzled by the young girl. Karen wanted to quickly deal with her in order to dispel all the lies. When suddenly Buster approached them, holding her son in his arms, Needy shouted that he wanted to go into his mother's arms. Buster looked at Karen and said with tenderness that Needy could not go into his mother's arms as she would get tired quickly. Karen smiled and said that everything was fine and she could support him. Buster said that she was undoubtedly weak. So you can't keep a little boy. Everyone was shocked and looked at the young people in bewilderment because they could not believe that the Archduke was rumored to be vile. They whispered and could not believe that Karen called her husband by name. They said that the young people had eyes full of love. Bastier looked at the young ladies and said that he thought his wife was a little tired. He asked them if they would mind if he took her away for a while. The young ladies said that they would not mind since the celebrations were ongoing. Buster looked at his wife with tenderness and said that his wife had just returned to high society after a long time, so he would be very grateful if they wanted to make friends with her. The girls were a little embarrassed and said with a smile that they would definitely make friends with her. The young ladies were perplexed and did not understand whether it was true that the Archduke could continue to behave this way even if the boy was not his biological son. They said that judging by the expression on the boy's face, he was really happy. They looked at the young boy and noticed that he had very beautiful eyes, like an archduke. One of the ladies said that there are rumors that the young people met secretly, even before the wedding, and this could be the son of the archduke. They looked closely at the young people and understood that such harmony is difficult to achieve if there is no true love. Buster looked at Ten and was shocked that his wife went to the Data Guild. He did not understand why the girl did not immediately report the information to him, Ten said that the Archduke was so busy that the lady forbade her to tell him. Buster looked at the young lady and asked if she was sure she had sent the man to follow her. Ten said that she constantly made sure that someone was watching the lady. Buster was furious and didn't know if his wife was crazy. 
since he knew she couldn't go there alone. He didn't understand what was happening and why she decided to do this. He was scared and worried about his wife's life, as he thought that her father might be there. Ten looked at him and said that he wouldn't be there today. Buster looked at the girl and asked what about teachers for his son. She looked at him intently and said that she was looking, but in her opinion, she thinks that school would be more suitable for the young master. Buster asked the girl to prepare all the documents, since he had to show them to Karen. Ten said she would do everything. Tan looked puzzled at the departing gentleman and said that it seemed to her that he had nothing planned outside the walls of the mansion. She asked if he had any plans. Buster said he just wanted to take a little walk, but in fact, he wanted to see his wife quickly in order to find out why she went to such a dangerous place alone. Tan looked at the gentleman in surprise and asked if he wanted to take a walk in the midst of work. Buster looked at Ten and asked which branch of the Data Guild his wife went to. Ten said that she went to the branch that is located in the center of the capital. As Buster left, he said that he would return in the evening. Buster looked over his shoulder at the young lady and asked if Karen had told her what she was looking for. Ten was confused and said that she did not tell her anything, but only said that she would tell him everything later. Ten looked at Buster and asked if she needed to find out information. Buster said that there is no need, and he will find out everything himself. Buster, thoughtful, said that he would just wait until she told him everything herself. He knew that she couldn't lie at all. So he will soon find out the truth. Ten looked at the departing Archduke and asked him to be careful. As Buster left, he remembered that he forgot to tell Ten very important information. He looked at the girl and said that in about three days, when the celebration was over, he would need to connect to the Emperor's palace. Ten was puzzled and didn't understand why he needed it. Buster said they were planning to make cuts, and it seemed like they were short of people. Ten looked at the Archduke and asked him if the Emperor was asking him for help. Buster said yes. He said that, however, he could refuse if he didn't like it. He looked at her and said that in the end, they both knew it was just an excuse. She looked away from the Archduke and did not answer. She felt uneasy. The young man looked at Karen and said that she had very beautiful hair. He called her by name. She was at a loss because she did not tell him her name. The young man said that he had never had gray hair, so much so that he wants to cut off her hair and put it on display. Karen was a little surprised and asked if he was joking. The young man looked at her and said that his name was Vasily. He said that he was very pleased to meet her and also asked what business she came to the guild with. She looked at him and realized that she was very tired of such people. She knew that the devil's obsession with destroying someone was consuming her from within. Karen looked at him and said that she needed his help. The young man looked at her and realized that the rumors were true, since he heard that in the past her father often bullied her. He knew that it would be nice if she wanted them to kill him. He understood that if this happened, then the Archduke's main secret would be in his hands. Karen looked at him and said that she wanted him to check on someone. He looked at her and asked if she wanted someone to be checked. Wouldn't it be better to ask the Archduke's family soldiers for help? Karen looked at him and said that the fact is that she didn't want her husband to find out. The young man looked at her and became more and more interested in him. He understood that for the sake of such a request, she had come unaccompanied. The young man asked who she wanted to find out about, since the cost would also increase depending on the status of the target. Karen said that she would like to know about a girl named Yvette Pearson. He looked at her and asked if she wanted to know about the illegitimate daughter of the Count's family. Vasily said that they have quite a lot of information about her, since they recently collected everything. He asked, with a smirk on his face, what exactly she was interested in. He smiled and asked her if she wanted any information that would lead to the girl's downfall, or if she was interested in something that could help her take over the Pearson family. Karina looked at him, puzzled. She didn't need that kind of information. The young man asked if she wanted to dig deeper and find out how the girl seduces the Archduke. Karen looked at him and said that everything was wrong. The young man was puzzled and asked if she didn't suspect the girl of having an affair with her husband. Karen said, puzzled, that everything was completely different from what he thought. Karen said that even if this were true, then Buster is free to date whoever he wants. The young man was a little puzzled by these words, since he knew that they were husband and wife. Karen looked at him and said that she just wanted to know how the girl lived and about those with whom she often saw in the last three days. The young man looked at her and said that the amount of information would increase, so the fee will be much higher. Karina asked what the final price would be. The young man said that the price for a girl would be 30 million and 10 million for each new person. Karen said that she understood everything 
and agreed to his terms. He looked at her and asked if that was all or if she wanted something else. Karen looked at him, puzzled, and asked what he meant. Vasily said that they are definitely a data guild, but they are also approached with other requests, for example, to reveal the weaknesses of the enemy to the world and remove them from society. They could get rid of them forever and make everything look like an accident. He looked at her and said with a grin that there must be someone she would like to get rid of. Karen was excited and said that it turns out that he had already secretly found out about her. He looked at her and said that this kind of information should always be with the Guild, and they usually don't do this, but they can do anything if Karen asks for it. He tenderly placed his hand on hers. She was a little puzzled. She wanted to say something, but suddenly she heard it. Karen sat puzzled next to the man and did not understand what was happening, since there was screaming and noise outside the door. Buster rushed into their room. Karen looked at her husband in shock. Buster was angry that his wife was sitting next to a man in such a place. He saw that he was holding her hand. He looked at them with anger and rage and ordered the man to remove his hand. He came closer to his wife and hugged her, and he also said that they were leaving. Karina looked at her husband and asked how he knew where she was. The young man looked at Karen and said that he had already told her that the Archduke had sources that were not easy to obtain. The young man looked at Karen with a smile and said that next time he would prepare a cake for her. Buster looked at him in bewilderment, and they hastily left the guild. The young man just laughed after them. Angry and angry, Buster, holding his wife by the hand, rushed down the street. Karen asked him to wait a little. She looked at him and asked why he was angry. She asked him to say what exactly was the reason for his anger. He looked at her and said nothing. He hugged her and asked why she was holding hands with the young man. Karen looked at her husband dumbfounded and said that she didn't know. Karen said that most likely he wanted to check if she was lying. Buster was puzzled. She said that she once read about this. They said that you can check by the pulse whether a person is lying or not. Buster was seriously worried, but said nothing in response. Karen came closer to Buster and asked for his forgiveness. She said that he was probably angry with her because she left and did not tell him about her departure. She asked for forgiveness and said that next time she would tell him before leaving. She said that she didn't want to bother him and therefore didn't warn him. He looked at her and didn't understand why she always apologized. He said he owed her an apology himself. He understood that he was to blame. Karen was at a loss. He said he was furious when he saw her holding hands with such a dangerous man. She looked at him and asked him with a smile if he was worried about her. She said that he shouldn't worry about such things as she was quite careful. He looked at her and sheepishly said that he was worried about her. He looked at her and asked how she would act and how she would feel if she saw him holding hands with another woman. She was puzzled by his words and said that she was not sure. He looked at her intently. Buster said that he personally didn't like this situation because he only wanted her to hold his hand. He took her hand with all tenderness and warmth and looked at her intently. Karina was shocked by her husband's words. Buster looked at his stunned wife. A little taken aback, Karen said that she still needed to hold her son's hand. Buster said that if it was Knighton's, then she could hold him. Smiling, they looked at each other. Karen laughed furiously, amused by the whole situation. She looked at him and said that from now on, if her son were not taken into account, then she would only hold his hand. Buster liked his wife's answer and accepted it easily. He looked at her and said that now he wants her to tell him if she wants to go out somewhere and asked her not to think about worrying. Yvette called the young man. He was sure that he did not think that anyone was following him. Shuri looked at the girl and asked if she had been fine lately. The girl said everything was fine. The young lady asked the young man to look at her. As she looked different, she said that her father was extremely concerned, even provided housing and new things. She also added that he assigned a servant to her. The young man said that it sounded very good. She looked at him and said with a smile that it was thanks to him. She looked at him and said that although they do not know who actually slept with the Archduke, the young man did not have time to finish, covering the young lady's mouth with his palm. The young man looked at the girl warily and said that she should always be careful, even if it was just the two of them. Yvette said that she was very scared because she was afraid that the woman might come back. He looked at her and told her not to worry, as he would do everything to prevent this from happening. The girl hurriedly rushed into the young man's arms. She said that he was truly the only person she could rely on. She hugged him and asked if he wanted to become her personal guard when she became an archduchess. Embarrassed, the young man said that he was ready for anything. The girl said that she would like such a day to come sooner. She was in his arms, but he said nothing in response to her words. Buster looked at his wife and said that Tan told him that Needy was fitting in well in society. 
so school is more suitable for him than private teachers. Karen said she didn't know it was possible to go to school at that age. She was a little excited. Buster looked at her and said that, judging by her expression, something was wrong. He asked, I'm not doing it in thread for an hour. Karen said that to be honest, she was very surprised. Needy looked at his mother and said that he wants to sleep alone. Karen looked at the boy and asked why he didn't want to sleep with his mother. Needy says he is a big boy now. Karen looked at him with her task, but asked where his mother would sleep then. Needy hugged his Mishka and said that his mother can sleep with his uncle. He told her to quickly go to her uncle as he wanted to sleep. Karen was shocked by her son's words. Karen looked at the book, puzzled, and said that this was the first time her son had behaved like this. She did not understand what she had done wrong. Buster looked at her and said that it was impossible. He understood that it was not her fault at all, since he had planned all this. Buster asked Knightons if he wanted a sister. Knightons said he really likes the sisters, so he really wants a sister. Buster looked at the boy and asked if he wanted Buster to tell him how to get it. Knightons was happy and excited and said he was eager to hear. Buster looked at him and with a smile told him to let him and Mommy sleep together twice a week. The thread was perplexed. He asked with a smile if he let them sleep twice a week. Then he would definitely have a sister. Buster said with a smile that he would definitely be there. Karen smiled and said that now it's just not going to take a little time to be alone. Karina was puzzled and asked why he no longer needed her. Buster hugged his wife and told her not to be sad, because not going is just growing. Karen was puzzled and said that the thought that he didn't need her upset her. Basta smiled at his wife and said that she always has a husband. Karen was surprised by her husband's words. Basta moved closer to her and said that the boy begins his own life so that he takes his own path. He also added that he chose her so that he will always be next to her. Buster looked at her and said that if suddenly sadness overcomes her, then she can easily tell him and rely on him. Karen was very pleased with her husband's warm words. She thanked him. The young people wished each other good night and fell asleep peacefully. A young girl came to the Archduchess. She said she was very pleased to meet her. Karen was perplexed and shocked. She did not understand what was happening and why the girl was in the estate. Karen did not understand how the girl could come to the residence of the duchy without permission. Karen looked at her and asked what business she came for. The girl said that she had come to meet the Archduke and asked whether he was here or not. Karen understood that the girl was behaving very disrespectfully and impolitely. Karen said that she had not heard that she should come to them. The young lady smiled and said that the Archduke said that she could come to them at any time if there was an urgent matter. The girl was embarrassed and said that she came only because of an urgent matter and she had no intentions of angering the Duke. She apologized and began to cry. The young ladies looked at her in bewilderment. Karen looked at her and said that if Buster said so, then it is so. She asked Ten to escort the young lady to the living room and inform Buster. Ten obediently agreed and said that she would do everything now. She looked at the young lady and asked her to go into the living room. The girl looked at the Duchess with a grin. Karen felt uneasy after the look of the young lady. She did not understand how this was possible. Because after the young lady arrived, her chest began to hurt. Buster looked at Ten and asked if Karen sent her. Ten said that Karen sent her and asked her to escort the young mistress to the living room and inform him later. Buster looked at the girl and said that in the future, unless it was really urgent, there was no need to let the girl into the house. Ten looked at him and asked if the lady is not so and who he was looking for. Buster said it was all strange, because he had a feeling that she was not the one. He looked at her and said that even if she turns out to be that girl, he won't change anything, since he already has Karen. He said that the past should remain in the past. He asked the girl to find out about it right now, and he also asked her to behave so that no one would know about anything. Tane said that she would do everything and he needn't worry. The Archduke came down to the young lady. She was very glad to see her. He looked at her and asked what was the matter, since she did not announce her arrival. The young lady bowed and said that she just wanted to say that her father was making her life difficult again. Buster was shocked and asked her why she came to him alone without warning. The hesitant young lady asked for forgiveness and said that he himself had said that she could turn to him for help if she was in trouble. He looked at her and said that he himself remembered what he said to her, but that did not mean that she could behave so rudely. She lowered her eyes and asked for forgiveness. He said that she had nowhere to go so that she did not think about the consequences. Buster looked at her intently and wondered if she really was that tall. The girl said that she had no intention of being so rude. Buster looked at her closely as he remembered that the woman that night was quite tall and had no shoes. 
Buster looked at her and asked her to come closer for a minute. The young lady agreed and hurriedly ran towards him. Buster heard the sound of her steps. He realized that she was wearing heels. She came closer to him, and he began to study her closely. In a trembling voice, she asked if he wanted to discuss something. He asked her to stand for a minute, show up at his estate again. He looked at her and said that he did not want his wife to have a misunderstanding after her appearance. The young lady stood puzzled after his words. She looked at him and said that this would not happen again. She left, leaving Buster alone. He looked after her and after their fleeting conversation. He was sure that three years ago he had been with another woman. He looked after her and did not understand how she dared to lie to him. Buster was wondering where the information was leaked. He didn't want to know who exactly became the traitor. Buster was pulled out of his thoughts by the boy's voice. Needy ran up to Buster and jumped into his arms. Buster looked at him and said that while last time he called him dad, now he calls him uncle. Needy thought for a moment. He realized that since his mother was not around, he could call him father. Needy hugged Buster and called him daddy. Buster said that mom shouldn't know about their secret. Karen saw Buster and asked if he had finished talking to the guests. Buster held the threads in his hands and said that he was already finished. Buster said the whole situation was outrageous. Karen looked at him and asked what he was talking about. He looked at her and asked if she would mind if he was with another woman. Karina looked at him in bewilderment. She looked at him and asked if he didn't call her because he needed her. Buster said she had it all wrong because he never allowed her to be so rude. Nitty ran joyfully around the room. Buster stared at his wife. He looked into her eyes and asked if it was true that she didn't feel anything when the girl came to him. Karen said that, to be honest, her heart hurt a little. Otherwise, everything is fine. Basta came closer to her and asked why her heart hurt. Karen looked at Buster and said that she felt like there was a stone stuck in her heart, and her heart was beating wildly, and she felt like she was suffocating. Buster was amazed and asked if what he heard was true. Karina said that everything was true and looked at him intently. She asked if it could be a dangerous disease. Buster was surprised and did not understand what kind of disease he was talking about. Karen said that he just had such a serious face that she thought she was sick. Buster said that luckily there is a small chance. Karen was surprised and did not understand what he was talking about. Karen said that something bothers her. Buster was puzzled and asked what was bothering her. Karen said that she was worried about that woman from three years ago. She said that he told her that he was looking for her all the time. She asked how he would feel when he met her again. Buster was puzzled because he saw that she was very calm, asking about her husband's past. He was wondering whether she was jealous or not. Buster said that he had been looking for her for a long time, and he was very embarrassed that she disappeared without a word. He looked at her and said that now he has her. Karen was a little puzzled and asked if the girl returned with the child. What would he do? Buster was puzzled and didn't understand why she was asking such a thing. Karen looked at him and said that she was just asking, because everything could turn out that way. Buster said he didn't know and didn't want to imagine such a terrible situation. Karen was surprised and didn't understand why the situation was terrible. He looked at her and said that just thinking about it already scared him. Karen looked at the floor and said nothing. Basta looked at her and said that even if this happened, no one could take her place and she shouldn't worry about it. Karen said that she was not worried at all. She was just interested. Buster was at a loss and understood that he was too worried. He understood that Karen was hiding something after all. Karina said that she was very interested in what her son was doing. She asked if he wanted to go and see him. Karen just wanted to pick up her son from school, and it turned out that she joined the tea party. The young lady said that she was honored to have the opportunity to have tea with the Archduchess. Karina smiled and said that it was also a great honor for her to sit next to them and drink tea. The man looked at Karen and said that it seemed to him that the Archduke did not come with her. The man looked at her and said that she had changed compared to last time. Karen was surprised. I don't understand what he's talking about. The man said he unknowingly filled it out from a meeting three years ago. Karen said that at that time she could not communicate with people. He looked at her and said that, however, it was more like she didn't want to do it, but simply couldn't. She looked at him and said that at that time everything was just like that, and she had never communicated with people. It was difficult for her to even believe them. But now everything was different. She realized that there are not only bad people in the world. Karen said that thanks to him, she was able to learn that the world is not only shrouded in darkness, and she realized that if you make an effort, you can see kindness. The man was puzzled by these words. He looked at her and realized that now she reminded him of his late wife. Karina said she is now relieved that her son and Kirian are getting along well. 
The man smiled and said that his son talks about needy every day. Karen was amazed, as she did not expect to hear such a thing. She asked what he was talking about. The man said that he praises the boy every day as a smart and talented child. Karen said she was worried because it was her son's first time spending time with friends, but she was very happy that everything turned out the way it did. The man asked if she had heard about the rumors that were going around about her and Buster. Karen was surprised and did not understand what he was talking about. The man said that he had heard that before marriage. They met secretly. Karina was surprised by such rumors. She did not understand how they could meet secretly. The man said that there are such rumors because Needy is very similar to the Archduke. She knew that this was true, but she still felt uneasy about such rumors. Karen looked at him and said that he was probably joking. She knew that sooner or later everyone would find out about her son's origins. Their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of two young boys. Karen hugged her son and asked if he behaved well in class. Needy said that everything was fine and he was happy. He had fun. He said that Brother Kirian helped him a lot. The children looked at their new friend and said that he was simply incredible. Karina thanked the boy for helping her son. The young boy, embarrassed, said that there was nothing to thank him for. The young boy said goodbye cheerfully. The emperor looked at Buster and asked if he had ever dated a woman. Basta looked at him and said that if the emperor wants to talk nonsense, then it is better not to bother him and finish the work as soon as possible. The emperor looked at him and asked if he had ever considered him his master. Buster, looking away, said that, at least now he thinks so. That's why he's here helping him with his work. Buster looked at him and said that if he wants to talk about Yvetta Pearson, then it's better not to do this. Since he was uncomfortable talking about it, the emperor was a little surprised, since he had previously told him that he was looking for her. Basta was a little puzzled and said that this girl is not who she says she is. The emperor was a little surprised. The emperor looked at him and asked him with a smile if it was not her that he was so desperately trying to find, since the mysterious woman appeared three years ago and disappeared without a trace. Buster looked at him and said he was sure it wasn't her. The emperor looked at Buster with a grin and said that it looked like the girl was trying to fool a man like Buster. The emperor looked at Buster and asked with a smile whether the girl wanted to commit suicide. Buster was angry with the emperor and said that he came to his house specifically to mock him. The emperor looked at him and said that he was also interfering with his personal life. Buster was surprised by this statement and told the emperor to be realistic. He looked at him and asked if he had been calling her for three days, as the emperor had asked. The emperor looked at Buster and asked if it was he who set her up. The emperor said that most likely it was he who told her how to end their relationship. Buster said that he had never said anything like that, and he meant that in this way, she could solve a problem that had been hanging for ten years. The emperor looked at Buster and said that the girls just needed more time. The emperor said that she was still worried about her different statuses so that he strongly restrained his feelings. The emperor was ready to do everything he could to convince her. The emperor looked at Buster and said that he should not interfere anymore. Buster looked at him and said that he understood everything. The emperor said with a smile that his ability to understand was amazing, and he also added that she would give him a place in the front row at their wedding. Buster looked at him and asked him not to talk so horribly. The emperor looked at Buster and asked him if he was secretly dating a girl. Buster asked him to stop talking about her. The emperor said with a smile that he was not speaking. He actually meant the duchess. The emperor said that the little boy was too much like little Buster. The emperor asked Buster if it was true that he was his son. Buster was puzzled and said that this was not the first time he had heard this. But the problem was that he did not remember anything, but that did not mean that he did not suspect. The emperor said that if that child was three years old, then it was then that he met that mysterious woman the emperor looked at him and asked if it was strange to say that this was just a coincidence. Buster looked at the emperor, puzzled, and said that he had thought about it too. Buster constantly searched for at least some information about what happened then. The emperor believed that the situation was actually very strange. He did not understand if she was really that same mysterious girl, then why would she hide the truth from him? The emperor said that he heard that things weren't all that fun when they got married. He asked him if it wouldn't have been easier if she had just asked him for a favor. Buster said that not everything is so simple. He remembered how he behaved with her when they first met. He told her then that he hoped she would live without attracting attention. The emperor looked at Buster and asked if the girl had asked to add her son to the family register. Buster, looking at the emperor, said that she had never asked for such a thing. The emperor was surprised and did not understand how this was possible. 
he asked him if everyone was going crazy to get the position of successor. Buster looked puzzled at the emperor and said that she was not one of those who was interested in such things. Buster said that, moreover, she said that she did not want to drag her son into everything. The emperor was surprised and said that she was definitely an interesting woman. Buster looked at the emperor but did not answer. He passionately wished that Karen really was that same woman and did not hide the truth from him. He understood that if she was hiding something, then she still did not trust him. He sincerely hoped that the boy would be his son. But on the other hand, he hoped that this was not the case. Buster came to the boy and said that it was time for him to get up. Needy looked at Buster with sleepy eyes. Buster greeted the little boy. Needy called Buster Daddy. Every time he called him Daddy, he got a strange feeling. Needy looked at Buster and asked where his mother was. Buster said she was still sleeping. The boy smiled and said that his mother was a sleepyhead. Buster looked at the boy and asked if Mom always slept that long. Needy said that when Mom had only him, she would wake up early. Buster was surprised, and Needy said that the Viscount just kept coming into their room. Buster was puzzled by the boy's answer. The boy said that he often burst in and screamed terribly when they were sleeping for a long time. Buster looked at the boy sadly. Needy said that his mother hit him then and then argued with the Viscount. Buster hugged the boy and told him not to worry because he would protect him, and this won't happen again. Buster looked at the boy and asked if his mother had told him anything about his real father. Needy looked at Buster with big red eyes. Needy asked if the monsters came. Buster looked at the boy puzzled and didn't understand what the monsters had to do with it. Needy asked if Dad had seen goblins. Surprised, Buster asked what this meant. Needy understood that he could not say anything, since his mother asked him not to say anything to his father. Needy rushed to the toilet with lightning speed. Buster was surprised. He did not understand what came over the boy. Buster watched as the boy ran away. He smiled seeing the mischievous boy. Ten came to Bastre and asked for forgiveness for such a visit. She said that she met with the Data Guild member while investigating what he was asking for. Buster was puzzled and did not understand why she met him. Ten said that it looks like he found out something and she plans to use it to make a deal with them. Blaster didn't understand what was happening. Ten said that there is, however, one problem. Buster asked what the problem was. She said that the head of the guild was heading to their estate. Entering the room, he saw a young man. The young man said that he was very glad to meet him. Buster was very angry and did not understand how he could come here. He shouted in rage whether he understood where he had come. The young man asked with a grin if not all houses were the same. The young man told the Archduke not to be so rude and asked him to sit down, and he also asked if they would serve him tea. Buster looked at the young man with contempt and asked why he was here. The young man said that he only came to make a deal with him. Vasily looked at the Duke and said that it looked like the Archduchess had tried hard. He said that even they saw it when they found out about her. Buster looked at him and asked if he wanted money. Vasily said that of course he wants money, since everyone needs it in order to survive. The young man said that, to be honest, he has a lot of money, so he will ask for something more interesting. He said that he would at least ask Archduchess Karen. Buster was shocked and furious at his words. The young man said that he was starting to want her. Buster was furious at what he heard and looked at the young man with contempt. He looked at him and asked. Apparently, he had already gone completely crazy if he wanted death by his hand. Buster came closer to him and told him to get out quickly and not even think about approaching his wife. He said that trash like him couldn't stand anywhere near a woman like her. He looked at him and asked if he thought that the young man himself was clean and said that if we talk about garbage, then, as he knew, he was also not far behind. Buster looked at the young man with rage and told him not to put him even next to him, because Buster was sure that they would harm her. The young man looked at Buster and asked if he needed information. He said that such information could not be obtained by simply boasting of good manners, and he asked whether such a pure person as the Duke could obtain it by relying on kidnapping or torture. Buster was furious and told him to give him the information. The young man laughed and said that in the end, he would still want to get information. The young woman said that she would give him all the information for only 99 million. He said the discount would be only 1 million. Buster looked at the envelope and said he would send someone to pay him. The young man thanked the Archduke. He was glad because he realized that Buster knew that information was more important than money. He looked at the Duke and realized that he thirsted for the truth. The young man said that he only remembered that during the investigation, he discovered something. Smiling, the young man said that he would send it to him later as a gift. Buster left the office in a hurry.
The young man looked at the departing Archduke and said that the whole situation was very funny and interesting. Karen was greeted by someone. She was in shock, did not understand what was happening. Turning around, she saw a young man who had climbed through the window. She was shocked that he didn't use the door. Vasily came closer to her, took her hand and said that she was definitely also Sonia. She took her hand back and said that she wouldn't lie to him. So that he does not need to check her by holding her hand, the young man was puzzled. Karen said that she read about this in a book, and he does this to check if she is lying. Karen realized that he wanted to find out her pulse in this way. The young man was puzzled by this conclusion. The young man handed her an envelope and said that it contained the information that she asked to take away. Karen was surprised because it turns out that it was possible to get it before her will, and quickly. The young man said that he managed to collect information quickly so that he came to give her his personal hands. The young man said that he still had business with the Archduke, so he was delayed. Karina was in shock and did not understand what was going on with them. I read all the information. She looked at the young man and asked if everything that was written there was true. The young man said that, of course, everything there is true, since the information provided by the Guild is always correct. Karen read a lot of interesting information and realized that their soldier was a traitor. She realized that the girl had used the information received from the soldier. Karen was shocked as she realized that the girl had marked the Duchess's place. She realized that if Buster fell in love with someone else, then she was ready to give in. But she realized that she would not give up now since everything happened based on a lie. She didn't want to be used for someone else's plans. She realized that this was not fair to her and her husband. The young man looked at her and wondered if Karina would ask her to kill that woman. He saw her rage. She was usually reserved. And now I couldn't contain my anger and lost my calm. Karen looked at the young man and asked if he had told Buster this information for an hour. The young man said that he did not tell anyone anything, since he is not one of those who does not keep his word. The young man said that he did not tell him a word about what Karen asked to know. The young man knew that he had given him other information, no less useful. Karen looked at him and asked him not to tell her husband anything. The young man said that, of course, he would not tell anyone anything, and the information purchased by Karen would not be sold to anyone else. He looked at her and asked if she would like to know anything else. The young man said that they could also easily eliminate the girl. Karen looked at him and said that there was no need for that. He came closer to her and said that if she only wished, he could fulfill her wish, whatever it was. He looked at her and said that he would do anything. Karen looked at him and asked him not to overstep his bounds. He looked at her and said that she was very upset about him, given that their relationship was full of secrets. Karina was at a loss and did not understand what secrets we were talking about. He looked at her and said that she was hiding a lot from the Archduke. Karen pushed him away and said that she had no idea what he was talking about. He looked at her intently and said that after all, whoever the young girl was pretending to be all the time was the Archduchess. The young man said that it was quite funny. He looked at her and said that this all proved that her facial expression could change as if her life was ruined. He came closer to her and told her to find him when she needed help. He said he could also help her escape. Karen was at a loss and did not understand why he would do everything for her. He looked at her and said with a smile that it was simply because he liked her. The young man looked at her and asked why she was hiding such a secret, since if she had been honest with the Archduke and asked him for help earlier, everything could have been much better. She was puzzled, looked out the window and said nothing, without answering the young man. The young man said that especially if her child was really Buster's son, he could have asked for much more. He said she could ask for revenge, wealth, fame, and more. The young man looked at her and said that, however, she chose a different path. He did not understand why she did this. Karen, in turn, looked at him puzzled and did not answer him. A moment later, she said that she didn't want to do that to someone who didn't even like her. The young man looked at her and asked if she was talking about love. Karen looked at him and said that if he told him now, he would only become a burden for the Archduke and she would not want the responsibility to fall on him because she did everything of her own free will. Karen said she didn't deserve the Archduke to begin with, so she wasn't going to tell him everything that happened. She looked at the young man and said that however, someday she would be able to tell him and also apologize to him. She knew that she shouldn't have lied to him, but now there was no point in even regretting it. She looked at him and asked if he could help her. He smiled and said that she just had to ask and he would do everything. She looked at him and asked if her son was kicked out. Could he find a safe place for her son? The young man looked at her and asked what she would do and how she would live. 
she looked into the distance and said that she didn't care what happened to her. He was upset by such words and, looking at her, asked if she had other reasons to live besides her son. Karen looked at him puzzled and did not answer. The young man asked what she would do if her son did not need her. He told her what she would do if she had to live for herself and did not care about anyone. She looked at him and said that she had never thought about such a thing. The young man said with a grin that it turns out that her soul only believes in her son. He smiled and said that it seemed that even the Archduke himself could not make her live. Karen was shocked, looked at the young man and asked, It means that he said his words so that she could think about them herself. He looked out the window and said that he would definitely help her when she needed him. With the speed of lightning, he jumped out of the window. Karina was shocked by this behavior of the young man. She didn't understand how he could leave so quickly. She stood, looked out the window, and thought about his words. She did not know what her meaning would be after she left the estate. Her thoughts were interrupted by a knock on the door. She saw Buster enter. She didn't expect to see her husband. He looked at her and asked what she was doing. Karen looked at him and said that Vasily came and they talked a little. She said that he came to give what she asked for. Buster looked at her but said nothing. Karen approached him and asked if the man had told him about their meeting. Buster said he said everything. Buster looked at her and asked what they were talking about. Karen hesitated. I didn't know what to answer her husband. A moment later, with her eyes wide open, she said that the young man asked what she would do if her son were not around. Karen said that she could not answer such a question. Buster was puzzled and asked why she couldn't answer. Karen looked at him and said that she only wanted one thing, and Buster was the one who made it possible. Buster was perplexed and did not understand what she was talking about. Karen said that she wanted to escape from that house, and thanks to Buster, her dreams became a reality, and thanks to him, her son is now safe. She lowered her eyes and said that she didn't need anything else besides this. Karen looked at Buster and asked what about him. She was very interested to know what he would like. She said that usually people dream of something, and he must have dreamed of something too. Buster said that he doesn't know, because perhaps he would have taken on all the responsibilities and guarded the territory, and sometimes he would have hunted and the light would have come out, but now his whole worldview has changed. Karen was puzzled. She didn't understand why he said that. Buster looked at her and said that he hoped she and the threads would be by his side. Karen looked at him and asked if he really wanted her around. He looked at her and said that he really wanted her to always be with him and do what she wanted. He looked at her and said, and that's why he would like her to be honest with him and not hide anything. Buster looked at her intently and said that he would very much like to know more about her. He passionately wanted to understand her. The man asked Karen to tell him something that she could not tell him before. He looked at her with his big red eyes and didn't understand why she still continued to hide something from him. He didn't understand why it was so difficult for her to tell him everything that was on her soul. Walking towards Karen, standing outside the door, he heard a conversation between Karina and Vasily. What he heard hit him like a bolt from the blue. He couldn't believe everything he heard. He realized that the woman was Karen. He was shocked that the same woman he had met three years ago had become a completely different person. She was always modest and insecure around him and constantly hid her feelings. He couldn't understand why she still didn't trust him. He was confused as he constantly tried to do everything in his power for her. Standing outside the door, he wondered why she was doing this to him. Buster asked her if she had something that she had been hiding for quite some time and would she like to tell him. He came closer to her and asked her to just tell him everything now. He looked at her, puzzled, and asked if she had anything else to tell him. Karen looked at him and thought that this might mean that he already knows. She realized that he was just trying to get something out of her. She was unsure of her judgment, but she was very scared. She was afraid to tell him the truth, but she couldn't keep everything a secret. She looked at him for a moment and said nothing. She understood that she had to tell everything, but it was very difficult for her. She looked at him and asked for forgiveness. She said she didn't even know where to start. She came closer to him and said that they first met three years ago in a small alley in the capital. He looked at her and said that it turned out that she was that same woman. She was very embarrassed because she knew that he was looking for her all the time and now she was standing in front of him. He stood, looked at her, and was very glad that he had finally learned the truth. He was glad that he had found her, but he felt as if a knife had pierced his heart. Karen looked at him and asked for forgiveness. She said she was very sorry. Buster looked away and said that wasn't the point. He looked at her and said that he never wanted to hear her apologize. Karen hesitated a little. She knew that she had to tell him everything, but with every word it was even more difficult for her. She looked at him and said that it was very painful for her not to go, 
and as if her heart was breaking, Karen lowered her eyes and once again asked him for forgiveness. She said that they met by chance that day, but then she intended to get pregnant in order to leave the estate. She said that she wanted to avoid marrying the Count, even if she had to die. She looked at him and said that she had used him and asked for forgiveness again. Buster looked at her and said that everything happened with his consent. Karen was taken aback. Buster looked at her and said that he himself allowed her to do all the actions towards him. He came closer to her and said that he was already an adult and had thought about everything and decided to help her. Buster said that they both did certain things, not just her alone, and therefore they were both responsible for everything. He looked at her and asked why she thought it was only her fault. Karen averted her eyes from him and did not answer him. His words brought tears to her eyes. She said that he was wrong and this should not have happened. Karen said it was only her fault. Karen said she committed the unforgivable sin with Knighton's too. He looked at her and said that this was not what he wanted to talk about. The girl burst into tears. Buster asked her to look at him. Karen burst into tears and asked him to leave her, as she could not forgive herself for what she had done. She said she didn't deserve him to treat her well. Crying, Karina said that she should not have met him then. He was furious and did not understand what she was talking about. He looked at her and asked if she said she regretted meeting him. Karen said she was sorry. Buster was devastated and didn't understand why she was saying that. Karen cried and said that it would be better if she just died. The man was shocked by her words. He pushed her onto the bed. She was perplexed and did not understand what was happening and what he was going to do. Buster looked at her and asked if her life really wasn't that important to her. Her words agitated him and he was angry that she would say such things. He looked at her and asked if he and his son really meant nothing to her. Karen looked at him and sobbed. She couldn't answer him clearly. Buster looked at her and said she shouldn't have said that. The man said that her judgmental attitude towards herself hurt him. She looked at him with her big, tear-stained eyes and asked why her words hurt him so much. He looked at her and asked if she couldn't guess why he said there was only one reason. Buster tenderly touched his wife's face and said that he liked her. Karen was surprised because she did not expect to hear this. He said that she heard everything correctly and he truly likes her. She looked at him and asked if he wasn't angry with her Buster said he was very angry and also very upset. Buster hugged her and said that he was very angry, but not at her. Buster hugged his wife tenderly. Karen understood that his words were magical. Buster was upset that he couldn't recognize her himself and couldn't keep her three years ago. He was sad that he could not find her then, and she went through all the agony because he could not help her. He sincerely apologized to her for making her wait so long for him. Hugging her, he asked for forgiveness. He frantically asked her to forgive him for failing to recognize his true love. Buster looked at his wife and said that he loved her. Karen looked at him and said that if this is so, then she is in an even more difficult situation. Buster was surprised and did not understand what she was talking about. He looked at her and asked what her words meant. Karen was embarrassed and said that she simply didn't know anything about love. She looked somewhere into the distance, averting her eyes and asked him if love doesn't concern two people. Karina said that she doesn't know what love means. Buster, fascinated by his wife, looked at her intently with wide eyes. He tenderly threw her on the bed and said that if she knew nothing about love, then she needed to find out as soon as possible. Karen looked at her husband in bewilderment. Buster told her not to worry about anything because love came in many forms. He looked at her and said that he would teach her everything. Fascinated by his words, she gazed at her husband. Buster said that he would help her learn the beauty of love slowly and gradually. He hugged her and said that he would teach her everything gradually until she herself understood what love was. He wanted to study the properties of love with her. Buster kissed his wife with tenderness and warmth, but before that, he said that he loved her very much. Buster looked at his wife and asked if their son had a fight with his friends. Karen said it looked like they were being laughed at, since the boy was the only child without a toy. Karen said that he must have wanted a toy all along, but she didn't even know what her child needed. She was upset by the whole situation. Buster looked at her and said that if that was the case, then she shouldn't worry. Moving away from her, he smiled and said that he would buy an entire toy factory. Karen was shocked. He said to talk to Ten now. Karen would like to stop him and tell him not to buy the whole factory. Buster said he couldn't stand to see his son belittled over a toy. Karen looked at him and asked with a smile if this was all too much and why buy a whole factory. Buster was confused because he didn't understand why she said it was too much. Karen looked at him and said with a smile that, to be honest, there would be a lot of factories. Buster smiled and agreed that he had crossed the line after a few minutes of thinking. 
He said he would just buy a toy store. Karen was a little puzzled by her husband's zeal. She asked how much money he had. Buster smiled and said that he had a lot of money and did not regret spending on her and his son at all. He walked up to her and hugged her too. He told her that she didn't need to worry about such trifles. Buster hugged her tighter and said that she was like the lady of the family. You don't need to worry about money at all. Karen smiled at his words. Karen looked at her husband and said that she remembered something when she was studying the financial statements. Karen said that she had previously seen such a book from the Viscount, but now it seemed to her that there was no point in them. Karen said that the dates and products are the same, but he has two of these books, and the total amount is different. Buster thought for a moment and said that it looked like he was keeping double financial statements. Karen looked at her husband and said that she also recently remembered something. She came closer to him and told him that in exchange for his marriage to the Count, the Viscount received complete control over the mineral resources. Buster was surprised and asked if this meant that the Count offered to transfer the rights to the Viscount. Buster said he was clearly out of his mind to carry out an illegal transfer. Buster knew that the Count did not have such power and rights. Buster understood that most likely the Count had simply tricked the Viscount. He knew that because of the lie, Karen had almost been sold as a thing. The very thought of it scared Buster. Buster thought a little about the whole situation. He knew that he would not allow them to die in peace. He furiously wanted to start taking revenge on the Count. Buster hugged his wife tightly. She didn't understand why he would suddenly do this. Buster looked at his wife and said that he was very grateful that she was with him now. Karen smiled at him. Buster said he would wait patiently for her. He asked her to love him. Buster didn't care how long he had to wait for her. The Count shouted furiously at his subordinate and did not understand what happened and why all deliveries stopped. The young man told the Count that their clients began to break contracts. The Count shouted for the young man to convince them or even threaten them. He told the young man that no matter what happened, he must ensure supplies. A young man rushed in and said that they had bad news. The Count was at the factory and did not understand what was happening. The young man said that miners and carpenters are protesting and saying that they will not work until their wages are raised. The Count was shocked. He didn't understand how they could do this. He screamed furiously how they dared to do this to him. He screamed and threw various objects at everything that came into his hands. He shouted that he didn't care and they needed to figure it out quickly. He knew that with such snags, it would be difficult to carry out a deal with the Mayotte Trade Association. The Count shouted after them to do everything in their power if they wanted to stay alive. The Count sat down on the sofa. He was very angry about everything that happened. He sat and understood that in times like these, there should be a beautiful woman nearby who would support him. He remembered the young, beautiful Lady Karen, having seen her recently at a reception. He was amazed even years later by her exceptional beauty. Even though she gave birth to a child, he understood that at that time he had to make her his woman. The Count knew that if she were with someone else, he would fight for her. But at the moment, his rival was the Archduke. The Count understood that this situation was very annoying. On a beautiful bright day, Karen slept soundly. She didn't want to wake up and lay in bed for a few more minutes. When she woke up, she saw that her husband was not next to her in bed. She thought that he must have woken up very early. Karen sat down on the bed and smiled to herself, as she was too used to sleeping with him. Nightens came to her room and was very happy to see her. The boy ran up to his mother and hugged her. Karen asked if he slept well. He said that it was very good, and in response asked how she slept. Karen said she slept well too. Karen looked at her son and asked if he had met his dad yet. Needy said that he saw dad, and he was on the street. He said that Buster was swinging his sword and hitting him in the street. Karen looked at her son and was touched. She said that he must have been practicing blows with a sword. Buster came out of the shower and asked if they were talking about him. The boy ran joyfully to his father. Buster looked at his son and said that they agreed to go to one wonderful place. He asked him if he was ready to go with him. The little boy was very happy and said that it was great, it sounded, and he was ready. Karen was at a loss and did not understand what was going on. They arrived at a toy store and the store owner greeted them. Buster looked at his son and told him to choose whatever he liked, since all the toys were his. Karen was shocked by her husband's actions. The little boy was truly happy. Karen looked at her husband and asked if he really bought the store. Buster looked at his wife and smiled at her. He said he only wanted to buy one. Buster looked at his wife and asked what happened. If she doesn't like it, he can buy another one. Karen smiled and asked him not to buy any more stores. 
the young parents looked at their son. Karen said that the boy seemed to really like it. She said he must have wanted a toy all this time. Buster looked at his wife and said that this concerns her too. If she wanted something or liked something, then she could just take it. Karen laughed and said that she was already such an adult and didn't understand why she needed a toy. Buster, looking at the dolls, said that such elite dolls are often bought by adults. Karen looked closely at the toys and was surprised at the truly incredible beauty of the toys, but her gaze was caught by one toy. She saw a small, beautiful bear among all the dolls. She took it and realized that it was very light and soft. She said that she never actually had toys. Buster was shocked and upset, standing and looking at her. He hugged her and said that he would arrange a dollhouse for her and fill the whole room with dolls so that she would like it. He looked at her and, smiling, said that she still could not sleep there since she had to sleep with him. Karen smiled. She was very happy and pleased. Karen looked at Little Bear and said that only one toy would be enough for her. Karen slept sweetly next to her teddy bear. Buster looked at his wife puzzled and said that she saw nothing but a teddy bear. He was upset and did not understand why she was not paying attention to him. Karen looked at her husband and smiled, wishing him good morning. Buster was very offended. He said that she hasn't behaved like this since she got the toys. He said they were completely ignoring him. Buster looked at his wife and asked who she would choose, him or the teddy bear. Karina laughed. She came closer to him and hugged him, saying that of course she would choose him. Karina said that she really likes him and that no one or anything compares to him. He looked at her and, embarrassed, said that her relationship had improved. Karen smiled and asked if he liked it. He hugged her and kissed her and also said that he liked everything. The emperor looked at the archduke and asked why he was just interfering with his work. Buster was perplexed and did not understand. Why would he suddenly bother him? The emperor told him not to be a fool. He said that he could understand why Buster wanted revenge on the Viscount, but he did not understand why he needed the Count. Buster said that the Count was just a vile person. The emperor was in shock and did not understand whether Buster was joking or not. Buster said that he was not joking, but serious. The emperor looked at him and said that he knew perfectly well the reason for his hatred of the Viscount, but he did not understand anything about the Count. The emperor said that he was keeping it because it could be useful to him. Buster looked at the emperor and said that there was no need for him and asked him to be fired. The emperor thought for a moment and did not answer. The emperor looked at him and asked if the matter might be with the duchess. The emperor said that Buster was so blinded by love that he acted indiscriminately. Buster was furious and said that he did not think his majesty should say such a thing. He said that he once heard that when Teng was rude, a member of the guild disappeared and no one knows where he could have gone. The emperor was shocked and did not understand how Buster knew about such a trifle. Buster said that he knows everything and nothing can be hidden from him. The emperor looked at Buster and said that since they were talking about Ten, he would no longer wait for her. Basta looked at him and asked what would happen if he was subsequently rejected. The emperor said that this would not happen. He said that he would have to make the impossible possible. The emperor smiled and told Buster that he had better look for someone to take Ten's place. The emperor looked at Buster and said that it looked like the Viscount was very much driven into a corner. The man asked Buster if he was too cruel to the Viscount. Buster said that he was not being cruel to him. He was only getting rid of one of his illegal schemes. The emperor said that the Viscount became so because the scheme was a huge success. Buster said it didn't concern him. The emperor looked at Buster and said that he had heard that the Viscount had visited the mansion this afternoon to meet with the Duchess. The emperor told Buster not to pretend to be cool and to go and meet a man who was clearly bothering him. Karen stood and gazed out the window. Ten came to the Archduchess and said that her father had come to them, and she also said that she asked him to wait at the entrance. Ten asked if he should be kicked out. Karen looked at her, puzzled. Ten said that the man came and said that he came to check if his child was okay. Karen looked at the documents and said that it was stupid on his part. Karen asked Ten to take the man to the guest room. She said that she would meet him as soon as she sorted out the documents. Karen understood that he would come to her one day. She understood that he had no shame at all. The Viscount was furious that Karen had kept him waiting for hours. He was furious and shouted that it was impolite for the Archduchess to receive guests like that. Ten came to the Viscount and said that the Archduchess needed to sort out some documents, so she was late. The Viscount, in turn, shouted that he was already tired of hearing the same thing since it was not the first time, and he was already tired of waiting for hours for his daughter. 
Ten said that it would be better if he stopped making noise in the estate. The Viscount was furious because the Archduke's servants did not fulfill their assignments. He did not understand how a simple servant could treat him like that. Karen was furious at the Viscount's words. She said that this was not a simple servant, but that the girl was in charge of the management of the estate. The Viscount shouted at his daughter and said that as soon as she married the Archduke, she immediately caused him a lot of problems. She looked at him calmly and said that she had never thought about such a thing. Karen said that it was already kind enough to greet someone who came uninvited. The Viscount was shocked by his daughter's words. Karen looked at him and asked why he wanted to see her. Karen said that it seems he needs money. The Viscount was furious. Karen said that her father's unexpected visit could only be because of money. She asked if he really needed anything else. The stunned Viscount looked at his daughter. He did not understand how she could change so quickly. He knew that although she did not even dare to look into his eyes and lived as if she did not exist at all, now she was completely different. He looked at her intently and did not understand what had happened to her all the time. Karen looked at her father and said that if she was wrong in her assumptions, she apologized. The Viscount looked at her and said that his business was not going so smoothly since some problems appeared. He was confident that such a matter could be resolved with the help of the Archduke. Karina smiled but did not answer. A moment later, she said that if he wanted to ask for help, then he should have brought a decent compensation, but he came empty-handed. The Viscount was in shock and did not understand what she was saying at all. He looked at her and said that she really was the Karen he knew. She looked at him and said that she was no longer the same. Straightening up, she said that she was an Archduchess. The Viscount looked at her and asked if it was normal for the Archduchess to do this to her parents. She looked at him with contempt. The Viscount was angry and asked her who had given her and her child food and shelter in the past. He said that if it weren't for him, she would have long ago died of hunger on the street. He was furious because she didn't want to repay him for his kindness. He furiously shouted at her and insulted her. She looked at him and said that on the farm, animals are fed and kept in cages the same way, and when the time comes, they are sold to the butcher. Karen said that, like her, they were supposed to be sold to the count. She looked at him with fury and said that he was not her parent but only the owner. She said he was even less human than the farm owner. She said that he was just a pitiful man who lived by oppressing others. The Viscount looked at her with fury and asked if she had finished already. He did not understand how she dared to say such a thing to him. He furiously attacked her in order to cause harm. In the blink of an eye, Ten approached them. She pushed him away. The Viscount fell to the ground. He was dumbfounded by this behavior. Karina looked at him with contempt and said that he still resorted to cruelty. She said she would not stand by if he appeared in front of her or her family again. The Viscount was in shock and did not understand how such a pathetic girl could dare to behave so imperiously. He shouted whether the boy knew that his mother did not want to get married because she gave birth to a stranger. Karen looked at her father with fury. She didn't understand how he dared say something like that. She came closer to him and asked how dare he say her son's name with his dirty mouth. The Viscount laughed at her words and asked if she was trying to protect her son. He said that when he beat her in the basement, she also tried to protect him. He watched everything that was happening and said that the situation was quite touching. Karen told him to shut up. The Viscount looked at his daughter and said that her son had probably already grown up. He said that the boy was so innocent by nature and still knew nothing about the world. Karen kicked her father in the leg and told him with all her rage to shut up. Bacon was shocked by what the girl did. His leg hurt. Karen came closer to him and said that if he called his name with her mouth again, she would certainly kill him. I looked at him with all the anger and hatred and said that she would kill him, just like he killed her mother. She remembered that ill-fated day when, entering the room, she saw only the lifeless body of her mother, before that she saw every day how he beat her. Karen said that she would definitely make sure that he regretted giving her life. She looked at him and said that he didn't even deserve to die. She was disgusted that she was born from such a person as the Viscount. The Viscount was shocked by his daughter's behavior. He frantically asked her to stop. But Karen was not going to stop and hit him between the legs. He screamed in pain, and he wriggled on the floor. Karen looked at everything that was happening and said that he was disgusting to her. She looked at him and told him to listen carefully, since it was better for him never to appear in front of her again in his life. Karen said that she knows very well how many flaws there are in his fake accounting firm as well. She said she knew where that book was hidden, she said that she knew where he hid the real book and asked him never to forget about it. She said that he should not forget how well he knows her and how well she knows about him. Karen called Ten and asked her to accompany the guest. 
She said that she would do everything immediately. The Viscount looked at his daughter with fury. When Karen left, she told him not to let him into the house next time. Karina was walking along the corridor when a friend heard someone calling her. She turned around and saw her husband. She walked up to him and hugged him tightly. He looked at her and asked why she had such a sad expression on her face. He wanted to know what happened. Karen said that she just saw her father. Buster said that everything was clear to him now. Karen said that she was very tired because she felt a little worse after meeting him. Karina told Buster that her father might try to hurt him. Buster smiled and asked her if that was why she had a sad expression on her face. Buster said that she had nothing to worry about since a person like him could be quickly destroyed. Buster smiled and said that he had already seen what happened in the living room and he hoped that she felt a little better after what she did. Karen was surprised that he saw everything. Buster said the door was slightly open when he walked by, so he only saw a little bit out of the corner of his eye. Karen was upset that he saw everything. Buster hugged her tightly and said that it looked like he had managed to fall in love with her again. He looked at her and said the way she held herself there looked amazing. He said she was great. Buster said that a large-scale cleansing is planned in the Imperial Palace, and the Viscount is also included in the list of those present. Buster looked at her and said that if she wanted, he could help the Viscount get tougher punishments. Karen looked at him and said that she didn't want to, so that would be enough. Buster was puzzled and asked her if she wanted revenge on him. Karen said that if by revenge he meant murder, then she did not want to take revenge. He quickly looked at her and asked if she wanted to save her father's life. Karen said that she wished he could live a very long time. Buster was surprised. With these words, Karen said that she wanted him to live a long time in pain. Buster smiled and said that he would do whatever she wanted. Buster thought for a long time about killing him, but since his wife would like his life to be spared, he will agree with her. Buster knew that, being alive, he will pay for all his sins with continuous suffering. Buster looked at his wife and said that he promised to spare her life as well. Buster said that Pearson would be tried soon. Karina was surprised and did not understand why she should judge Count Pearson. Bader said that his family's corruption was so serious that he thought his entire family would be stripped of their titles this time. Buster said that the girl who tried to impersonate Karen, and then even mocked Karen, will also receive her punishment. She will be expelled from the Empire. Karen said, puzzled, that she understood everything. Karen looked at her husband and asked for forgiveness. She said that if she had told him the whole truth right away, then none of this would have happened. Buster's task looked at his wife and said that she did everything for him, so he asked her not to think any more about what she did. He told her that everything would be fine and it wasn't her fault, so she didn't need to apologize to him anymore. Karen said she won't apologize anymore. Karen looked at Buster and said that she had one request. He did not understand what she wanted to ask. Karen asked what about the Count. Buster said that the Count would soon pay for his sins. Karen said that the women and girls who were given to him by force suffer and also live a hellish life. Karen knew that the Count treated women like cattle, and if it weren't for Buster, she too would probably live such a hellish life. She understood that even now she felt free. However, she is still in slavery with her thoughts. Karen looked at her husband and asked, Is it possible to save those girls who were sold into slavery to him? Buster looked at his wife and told her not to worry, and he would do everything. Basta came closer to her and kissed her tenderly. He knew that in reality, she was the only person whom he simply could not help but love. Buster told Karen to leave all the worries to him. Karen and Buster slept soundly that night. Waking up, Buster watched his sleeping wife with tenderness. He was very glad that she was finally next to him. Having collected himself, Buster went about his business. Of them approached him Soldatov and greeted his master. Buster looked at the soldier and asked where the traitor was. The soldier said the man is now in the basement. Buster asked the soldier what about Yvette Pearson. The man said that the girl was still wanted. Buster was shocked that she hadn't been found yet. The man said that it seems that the girl is hiding very well, that her own family does not even know her whereabouts. Buster was confused but didn't answer. Buster walked up to the traitor and looked at him. He asked him why he decided to betray him. The young man said that he betrayed him because he loved the girl and passionately wanted to make her happy. Buster was perplexed and asked him if he wanted to make her happy at the expense of his family. The young man said that he had no excuses. He said he didn't think his plan would lead to this. The young man said that the whole plan was planned by him alone, and the girl was not at all to blame. The young man looked at the Archduke and asked to forgive the young lady. Buster was confused. Buster looked at him with contempt and said that he heard that when he was caught, 
he did not even show resistance. Buster looked at him and said that it seemed that when the young man came to them, he was even ready to die. Buster put the sword to the young man's head and said that he himself must understand what punishment awaits the shadow that dared to betray the master. The young man said in a trembling voice that he understood everything. Buster said that although he tried to protect her and even decided to sacrifice himself, it was all in vain. He said that all his actions were useless, since the girl would still be expelled from the empire, and also she would not be able to stay in one empire for long, so that he will forever wander the world until the end of his days. The young man looked at his master in bewilderment and asked why he decided to give her a life worse than that of a mongrel. The young man knew that such a life was unfair. Buster looked at him and said that he was already too merciful to kindly give her life. The young man, in a trembling voice, asked Buster why he decided to punish her like that. The young man said that he had committed an unforgivable sin, but she did nothing. Buster was shocked by the young man's words. The young man said that the girl, being an unwanted and illegitimate child, was abused. He did not understand what her fault was. He knew that she just wanted to live and, in the end, followed his plan. Buster looked at the young man in bewilderment and did not answer. A moment later, Buster said that she tried to take someone else's place with the help of lies, and even if he planned everything, then it was her fault. The young man looked at his master and asked him if he were in the same situation as the girl. Would he have acted differently? He asked if he would not have acted like she did just to survive normally and finally become happy. Buster looked at the young man and did not answer his words. Buster looked at the young man and said that if he were in her place, he would never have done anything, since she, in turn, would have looked for other ways to solve the situation. The young man was shocked by his master's words. Buster said that in the end, she didn't even think about building her own happiness rather than taking someone else's. And he blindly tried to justify her. Buster told him to think for himself, since he only gave her an idea. But she could decide for herself what to do. The young man lowered his eyes to the floor and did not look at his master. Buster said that he also should have calculated his strength correctly before coming up with such a stupid plan. Buster said that maybe if he had realized then that everything would lead to such disastrous consequences, he would hardly have allowed her to do this. Buster said that if you understand that the enemy is too strong and it is unlikely that you can defeat him, then you just had to run headlong and not get caught by him. Buster looked at the young man with contempt and said that there is no mercy for traitors, but out of respect for him. He will let him kill himself. Buster said he could do it when he was ready. The young man, closing his eyes, was thinking about something. He did not answer his master, but a moment later he decided to thank Buster. The young people left, leaving the traitor alone. Walking down the corridor, Buster saw his son. A little boy stood in the corridor late at night, holding his toy. Buster was surprised when he saw his son. He asked if he really had trouble sleeping that night. A little boy asked his father if there were any more bad people. Buster exhaled and said that there are no more bad people. The little boy was very happy and asked if his mommy would be sick now. Buster looked at his son and told him not to worry, because he would definitely punish anyone who tried to harm his mother again. Needy was very happy and asked if what he was saying was true. Buster smiled and hugged his son tighter, saying that he would really protect his mother. Buster slowly carried his son into the room. Entering the room, Buster saw how quietly and calmly his wife was sleeping. Buster calmly laid the baby down next to his mother. The Archduke watched the sleeping family with a smile on his face. Buster walked up to his wife and kissed her quietly. He mentally promised her that he would protect them for the rest of his life. The Count was furious and beat everything that came in his way. He did not understand why the money stopped coming. The young man bowed before the Count and said that it seemed that the Archduke had a hand in their problems. The young man said that the Archduke cut off all ties with them so that they could not get new goods, not sell them, so if someone made a deal with them, he would immediately become the Archduke's enemy. The Count was shocked by the news. The Count did not understand why the Archduke decided to do this to him. The young man said that they have no idea what the problem is. The Count remembered the young lady and thought that, most likely, it was because of her, as once upon a time. The Count decided to contact him, after which he asked to sell it. The Count thought a little and was sure that it was unlikely that a man would do this because of a woman, since he knew that Buster was such a smart person by his will. The Count shouted at his subordinates. He said that he did not care what they did. He shouted that they could sell the building or take on a debt, but he immediately wanted to see the money. 
the young man bowed and said that a royal order had been given, that at the moment the Count should not perform any unnecessary actions, since there would soon be an audience. The Count was dumbfounded, as he had not heard anything about the order. Another young man said that he had heard about the order today. The Count was shocked and did not know what to do now. He angrily decided to leave the young people, saying that since they could not figure it out, he himself would go to the capital and find out about the order. The Count heard some strange sound. He heard the voice of a man who said that the Count did not have to go to the capital, since the audience could take place now. He was shocked. The Count saw the Emperor and the Archduke. The Count and his subordinates greeted the young people. The Count looked at the Emperor and asked with complete respect why he decided to visit such a wretched place. The Emperor looked at him and said that he had come to such a place in order to pull out a weed, because without this, flowers and trees would not be able to grow healthy. The Count was confused and did not understand why the Emperor was saying such words. The Emperor looked at his subordinates and told them to bring one person. They brought her to the girl. The Count was in shock and did not understand why the girl was brought. He understood that soon it would be the end of him. The Archduke looked at the girl and asked where the other women were. The girl said in a trembling voice that the rest of the women were on the second floor, one person in each room. The Archduke looked at her and said that they came here to look at the rooms on the second floor. The young men were confused and said that all the rooms were locked and no one could open them except the Count himself. The Emperor looked at Buster and said that he took care of everything here so he could safely go there himself. The Emperor looked at Buster and said that he must fulfill the wish of his beloved Duchess. Buster said he was going himself. Buster looked at the girl and asked her to come with him. The girl obediently agreed and they left. The girl showed him all the rooms. She said that there was one person in each locked room. When Buster looked inside, he was amazed by what he saw. He saw a young girl sitting on a bed on a chain. He saw her exhausted appearance. He realized that everyone looked happy, so terrible, and he became very angry with the Count. Buster angrily shouted for all the girls to be released immediately. For a moment, Buster imagined how the Count lustfully satisfies his needs with the girls. He understood that he was not a man, but a monster. He understood that this was all simply unforgivable. Buster stormed into the room with fury. The Archduke looked at the Emperor and asked forgiveness for his rudeness. He asked if he could use force against the criminal. The Emperor looked at Buster and said that he could do whatever he wanted. Buster drew his sword and cut the Count. Buster looked at the Count with contempt and asked the Emperor if he could kill him. The Emperor said that he could kill him, but the Emperor said that the Duke must remember that he hates it when everything is dirty. The Emperor looked at the Count and told the Archduke to make sure that the blood did not stain anything. Buster pushed the Count, who frantically begged for forgiveness. The Duke was furious and did not understand how the Count could offer him to sell Karen. He knew that most likely the Count would want to do the same thing to her or something even worse. Buster looked at the Count and realized that he was worse than an animal. The Emperor looked at the Archduke smiling and said that he was pleased with such a frightening figure. The Count frantically begged for forgiveness and pardon. He crawled to the Emperor and asked him to save him. The Emperor said that he had committed corruption and also kept a double ledger of illegal transactions and negotiations and even received records of the illegal buying and selling of women and the illegal distribution of drugs. The Emperor said that now that they themselves had come here in person and found out everything for themselves, that he had repeatedly beaten women. The Count frantically begged the Emperor to have mercy on him. The Emperor looked at him and said that he just wanted his work in this place to go smoothly, so he asked him to sign some documents. The Emperor looked at him and told him to sign and agree to transfer all his private property to the Imperial family. The Count immediately began signing documents. The Emperor looked at him and said that he had done a very wonderful job, since all the property in the mansion, including the mansion itself, was now confiscated, and the Count was demoted to a commoner, and all the rescued women should receive appropriate treatment and protection. The Emperor looked at the Archduke and said that it was high time for him to leave, so I asked him to take care of the rest. The Emperor looked at this Duke and asked him to be careful so that he did not overdo it. The Count was shocked and understood what awaited him. The Count frantically shouted after the Emperor. He shouted that he had signed all the documents and that he, in turn, had to save his life. The Emperor looked at the Count with contempt and said that he only asked him to sign. But there was not a word about saving his life. The Count was in shock and lying on the floor, screamed after the Emperor. The Archduke looked at the Count and told him not to worry because he wouldn't kill him right away. 
Buster said that the Count would suffer and suffer for a very long time. Buster looked at him and said with a grin that he would make him feel pain that would make him beg to die. The lady sat sipping tea and furiously discussing the current situation in the Imperial Palace. One of the ladies said that her husband was given a huge fine, while another girl said that it was good that he was only given a fine. She asked if they had heard any rumors circulating about the Count. She from the lady said that they could not think that the Viscount and the Count would disappear in one day. They were shocked that they could just go missing. The young lady said that they were very scared. Karen listened to all this and said nothing in response to the discussions. Approached Karen and said that the atmosphere was still very tense. The Marquis looked at her and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. He greeted her. She greeted him back. The Marquis said that no one could have thought that aristocratic society would change so much in just two months. Karen said that on the other hand, this is very good since now the aristocrats will be more careful while the emperor is alive. The Marquis looked at her and said that it seemed that the Archduke and the butler had temporarily moved to the Imperial Palace. Karen said that the Archduke needed to visit a building nearby. Karen said that she heard that the emperor was in good health these days. Their sweet conversation was interrupted by the arrival of Needy. Karen hugged her son and asked if he behaved well during the lesson. Buster looked at his son and told him to come to him, and he would take him in his arms. Karen was surprised to see her husband here. Buster looked at his wife with tenderness and said that she should not lift him anymore, since he had become very heavy. Buster approached his wife and asked if he was late. Karen said that he was not late, but arrived just on time. Buster asked if they could go now. The young ladies watched the Archduke and Archduchess and said that they were pleased that they were so cute. One of the ladies said that it turns out that a man has a sweet side. They rode in a carriage sitting next to each other. Karen was truly happy. Buster looked at his wife and asked if she would like a drink before bed. Karen was surprised by this proposal. Karen was taken aback and thought about it. She looked at her husband and asked if they shouldn't take their son to the next room then. Buster was confused and did not understand why it was necessary to carry his son. Karen smiled and said that they would spend this night together. Buster was shocked and embarrassed. Buster hugged his wife and said that this was the first time she had ever talked about the night together. He looked at her and said that he really hoped that everything would continue to be like this. Karen smiled at him and said that it would be so. Buster picked up his son and carried him into the room with a smile. He asked his wife to wait a little. He said that just a minute and he would come running back. Karen smiled as she looked after him. Buster looked at his wife and asked if she was interested in what happened to the Earl and Viscount. Karen looked at him and said that she had already learned everything from Vasily. Buster was shocked and did not understand when she managed to meet with the leader of the Information Guild. Karen said that they met by chance on the road while she was walking to a restaurant, after which they exchanged a few words on the street. She looked at Buster and said that he had nothing to worry about. Buster drank some wine and said that he was still a thorn in their lives. Karen smiled. Karen looked at her husband and asked if it was true that the Count had been handed over to those women. Buster looked at his wife and said that everything was true, because they suffered greatly from him, and Buster thought that this was how he would not be able to fully punish him. Buster said that thanks to the Emperor, they received proper medical care and protection, and their statuses were restored. Buster said all women will receive the best possible care, so that they can start life from scratch. Karen looked at her husband and thanked him for his help. Buster looked at her and said nothing. A moment later, Buster said that he would like to officially add the threads to the family registry. He looked at his wife and asked what she thought about this. Karen looked at him and said that for now. She completely agrees, because now they have become closer, and especially since he was his child. He looked at her and asked if she really agreed. He said that he would like to get married again. Karen was at a loss and did not understand what was going on. Buster said that what he meant was that he would like to have a wedding. Karen smiled and asked why. He wants to hold a wedding because she was already happy enough. Buster said that they entered into that marriage. He just signed the papers and he would like to hold the wedding, like others. He said he wanted to see her in a beautiful white dress and take her vows and exchange rings. Karen smiled and said that they didn't hold the wedding because there was a reason, but now, in principle, everything suited her and there was no need to hold it. Buster looked at her and said that he was not happy with this and he would really like to have a wedding with her. Buster said that he really wanted to confess his love to her and spend the night with her, as well as go on a date. He looked at her intently and said that he wanted to do everything as usual, his beloved. 
He looked at her with a loving gaze and said that they should start everything from scratch right now. Buster looked at her closely and said that he loved her very much. Karen was very touched by his words. She looked at him in fascination. Karen was a little puzzled and didn't know if this lifestyle would suit her. Buster looked at her and said that everything would suit her. He came closer to her and said that especially since they had already become ordinary lovers. He looked her straight in the eyes and said that he really liked her. He said that he doesn't know exactly what moment it happened, but in an instant, he fell in love with her very much. Buster said that's why he wants her to fall in love with him too, as soon as possible. Buster said that he hopes she will always be happy and also never stop smiling brightly. Buster looked at her and with a smile on his face said that he was ready to wait as long as necessary until she herself wanted to spend days and nights with him. Karen smiled as she was pleased with his words. Buster looked at her and told her to always remember that she could refuse him at any time because it was her right to choose. They lay on the bed and kissed passionately. Buster said he loved her very much. After the night, Karen could not open her eyes. Karen didn't want to wake up because she knew that they spent the night together yesterday. Buster looked at his wife and asked if she was awake. Karen looked at him intently and realized that although this was not their first night, she knew that they spent it like true lovers, starting everything from scratch. She thought that was most likely why everything felt different. Karen looked at Buster and said that his eyes reminded her of two brightly sparkling rubies. Karen smiled and said that she couldn't believe that the end of the year was very soon. Buster smiled and said that he never thought that the year would fly by so quickly. The young people merged in a passionate kiss. Buster looked at his wife and asked if she wanted to go on a date with him. Karina was very surprised and glad that he asked her to go on a date. Buster said that first he confessed his love to her. After that, they should have gone on a date, and then he planned to propose to her. Buster said that he decided that by doing this, he could carry out the wedding with peace of mind. He looked at her and asked how she liked his plan. Karen looked into the distance embarrassedly and said that she didn't mind, but unfortunately, she didn't know anything about what couples do on dates. Buster looked at her and said that on such dates, you can do whatever your heart desires. He came closer to her and asked if she would mind giving him some of her time. Karen looked at him and said that she thought it would be a little difficult to do this right now. Buster smiled and said that then he would be waiting for her in exactly an hour on the first floor. He kissed her and said that he hoped that she would remember today with warmth, because this would be their first date as ordinary lovers. After his words, Karen was very embarrassed. Buster looked at his wife and smiled and told her, See you soon, Needy said with a smile that he had already gone to school. Karina smiled and told him to try to behave properly in his studies. Buster looked at his wife and asked if she had said goodbye to her son. Buster said that it was actually time for them to head out. All day long, Buster spoke Karen my lady. This really embarrassed her, and she asked him how long he would continue to call her that. Buster looked at her and said, He will call her that until today is over. Buster looked at his wife and asked if she could pull back the curtain. I pulled back the curtain a little. Karen noticed a beautiful landscape. She said it was the first time she had seen such a fiercely beautiful landscape. Buster smiled. He said that he really wanted her to see him that way, so he asked Kusher in advance to go along that road. Karen thanked her husband. They arrived at the place, and a man came out to greet them. Basta looked at the man and said that they were happy. They had not seen each other for a long time. The man said that this was so. The man looked at them and said that he was pleasantly surprised. Since this time the Archduke came not alone, but accompanied by such a beautiful lady. He invited them to go inside. Karina was surprised by such pleasant words. They went inside, and Karen saw that there was no one at all in the restaurant. The man looked at her and asked if she was surprised that no one was there. The man said that Mr. Buster asked to rent the entire restaurant for today. Karen was surprised. The man invited them to sit down where it was convenient. The man looked at them and said that the Archduke and his father had been their visitors since his father was the manager here. So, he was lucky enough to see the little Archduke. Karina was very happy and asked what the Archduke was like as a child. The man looked at them and said with a smile that in truth, he was a very mischievous and naughty child. The manager said that Buster was just a terrible fidget. He said that he even remembers a time when Buster secretly snuck into the kitchen and turned everything upside down. Karen was very surprised. The man said that after the young Archduke overturned a pot of food in the kitchen, his father scolded him so much that he burst into tears. Buster was shocked and said he didn't cry. Buster screamed that he was lying and he never cried at all. Karen was surprised and laughed a little. 
She looked at her husband and said that he was very small then, and that's why he probably forgot. Blaster was in shock and shouted that this could not have happened at all, and he did not cry at all. Karen smiled and said that she believed him. The man said, looking at Buster, that it was nice to talk to them, but with their permission, he would go to the kitchen to bring them a dish. Karen smiled at the man, as she was very pleased to hear stories about her husband. They were brought a lot of food. Karen started eating and said that it looked quite tasty. Buster looked at his wife and said that after they had eaten, they would go for a walk to the capital. Buster looked at her and said that she still needed to buy her a lot of new jewelry. And after all that, a truly amazing surprise awaited her. Karen was shocked. She looked at her husband and asked when he had time to prepare everything. Buster looked at her and said it was a secret, and he couldn't tell her everything. Buster looked at her intently and said that he really wanted to see and do a lot of things with her. Karen, stunned, looked at her husband. She was surprised by his words. She was very pleased that he was taking care of her. Buster looked at his wife and said that he wanted to thank her from the bottom of his heart. After all, it was thanks to her that his life acquired bright colors and became so beautiful and happy. The young ladies drank tea with the Duchess. They thanked her for the invitation to the tea party. Karen looked at them and said that she was very grateful that they decided to accept her offer and helped her when she needed them. Karen said that she was very glad that her son was able to make so many friends. The young lady said that they were very happy to help her. One of the girls saw a ring on the Archduchess's finger. She said it looked very amazing. They saw the ring and said that it was the famous Royal Rose Diamond Ring. Karina was a little dumbfounded, since she did not know such details about the ring. They said that it was very charming. Karen remembered the moment when her husband, to the sound of fireworks, got down on one knee and proposed to her. She knew that this was really a big surprise for her. She didn't even think that the ring was so expensive and valuable. The girls said that they heard that the royal ring was from the royal treasury. One of the girls said that she heard that its price was equivalent to buying one gemstone mine. After hearing what she heard, Karen was shocked because she did not expect her husband to give such an expensive gift. One of the girls said that there were rumors that the Archduke was very good at choosing jewelry, and it seemed to be true. Karen was a little embarrassed and just laughed in response. One of the young ladies looked at Karen and asked if something was bothering her. Karen said she was worried that the Archduke had spent too much money. She said that that day he bought her a lot of expensive things and also rented a restaurant so that it would be just the two of them. And when they attended the performance, they sat in an empty hall. Karen said that in truth she felt very awkward because it was just the two of them in the entire audience. She said that this was not all and asked the girls if they knew designers named Dream. The girls said that they knew him since he is one of the most famous designers in the empire the girl said that there were rumors that he even became the personal designer of the Archduke. Karen said that the man sews one dress every week. Karina said that she only has one body, and purely physically, she does not have time to carry all the dresses. The girls looked at the young lady with envy and said that they were very sorry for her. One of the girls said that she was a little jealous because she couldn't buy his dress because he didn't put them up for sale. Another girl also supported her and said that she also wanted to buy at least one dress, but he refused and said that he would not sell the dress for money. Karen looked at them and asked if they would mind if she gave them a dress in his cut. Karen said that she has many dresses of his cut, which she has not even had time to touch. But in truth, there is one nuance. She will have to adjust them to the girl's sizes herself. The young ladies were very happy for such a generous gift. From the Archduchess, they frantically thanked her for such a gift. Buster looked at his wife and said that if you think about it like that, they didn't start dating like other couples six months ago. Karen knew that a lot had already happened during that time. Buster confessed his love to Karen every day. They went on a date once twice a week, and in public they showed tender feelings for each other, although it embarrassed her a little. She knew that if she remembered how wonderful the days spent with him were, she could simply melt. Karen was truly happy to be with her husband. Buster looked at his wife and said that there was a very beautiful and unusual island in the South Sea. He said that he heard that there are many places to walk and enjoy the view. He looked at her and asked if she would like to go to the island with him. Karen smiled at this proposal as she was drawn to the island. She asked how many days it would take. Buster moved closer to his wife and said that it would take them one week. He asked her how about going there together. Karen was shocked because she wouldn't be able to see her son for a whole week. She asked how he would be alone at home. Buster looked at her and said that he would be fine and she shouldn't worry. He looked at her and asked if she wanted to travel with just him. 
Buster approached his son and said that if mom and dad were together, alone for a few days, then Nitya would have a younger brother or sister. Niti was surprised and asked if it was true. Buster said it's true. Buster looked at his wife and hugged her. He said that he had already explained everything to the Marquis, and he said that he could babysit their son while they were on the cruise. Karen was surprised because her husband was able to prepare everything in advance. Buster said he also rented a boat for them in advance. Karen looked at her husband and couldn't imagine when he had time to prepare everything. Buster also smiled at her and said that he had already rented an entire island for them. Karen was a little puzzled and asked her husband if he thought this was a bit too much. Buster told her not to worry and everything was fine. Buster said that he really wants to make up for everything that she didn't have time to get because he had to be a little late. Buster looked at his wife and said that he really wanted her to be happy and get used to this. Because it will always be like this, he said that he wants her to take it for granted. Buster looked at his wife and asked if she would agree to go on a cruise with him. He said he wanted her to make her own decision because he didn't want to force her because then she wouldn't be able to fully enjoy the cruise. Karen looked at her husband, puzzled, and asked if he was worried that a lot of work might accumulate for her too. Buster looked at her and said that he had already worn ten. So she has nothing to worry about and everything will be fine. He looked at his wife's face and said that Ten herself offered to help when she heard that they wanted to go on a cruise. She also wanted to take a break from the emperor. Buster said that he knew that it was not entirely right to attract the young future empress, but however, she had not yet become an empress. So everything was fine. Buster looked at Karen and said that he would like to provide her with something for her to look at. Karen was puzzled and did not know what he wanted to show her. He presented her with the document and told her to open it and look for herself. Karen looked and saw the family registry. Buster looked at her and asked for forgiveness for the fact that the result was so late, since it took a little longer to add the thread to the registry due to the fact that the birth certificate was not registered properly. Karen looked at the document and thanked her husband. She was glad about all the current events, but she still felt sorry that she could not give him his father's last name and patronymic, but now he was officially with a last name and patronymic. Buster looked at his wife and asked her not to cry. Karina said that she was not crying at all. Karen looked at her husband and said that she was very happy, just crazy. Blaster kissed his wife and said that he loved her very much. Karen looked at her son and asked if he could cope alone without them. She also asked if he wanted to go with his mom and dad. Needy said that he could handle it all alone, and he didn't want to go with them. So, it's better he stays on the estate. Buster looked at his son and said that he had grown up a lot. Needy looked at his father and told him not to forget the promise he made to him. Buster said that he would not forget. Buster looked at his son and said that he might be naughty, but within the realm of reason, he agreed with him not to go. Karen smiled and said that Buster shouldn't have said that to his son at all. Buster looked at his son and said that if he wants to go to the toy store, he can buy whatever he wants. Needy was very happy, but also asked him if the money suddenly runs out, then they will starve. Buster told him not to worry, because even if the country goes bankrupt, his safe will always be full of money. Buster approached his wife and asked if she was ready to go. Karen asked him to wait a little longer. Karen approached her son and said that it was time for her to go. Karen told him not to cry, and if he missed her, he could send her a letter, but after thinking a little. She said that most likely it would not be possible to send the letter. She asked him to be strong, and his mother would return to him soon. Karina hugged her son and asked for forgiveness for having to leave him alone. The little boy said that he is already an adult and he can handle everything. Buster looked at them and said that at this rate they might miss the ship. They were already getting ready to go. Nitty, in turn, shouted and called his mother. Karen said that she would definitely buy him a gift. Buster was at a loss because he did not understand where on the island she was going to buy him a gift. They sailed to the island by ship. Karen was amazed by the beautiful view. She was fascinated by the view from the ship. She was truly happy to see such beauty with her husband. Buster looked at her and asked if she liked the view. Karen said that she was seeing the sea for the first time, and its green-blue color reminded her of emeralds. Karen looked at her husband and said that she would like her son to also see the sea. Buster said that he would certainly see the sea soon. Buster looked at his wife and said with a smile that even now she was worried about her son. She looked at him with a smile and asked if he was jealous. Buster smiled and said that just a little bit. 
Vaster said that now it is much more important that she spends every second of her happy time with him. Karen smiled and said that she was happy enough, 